let me, he had been put there, but I, I, I understand now he has been transferred to the Ministry of Agriculture, Ministry of Industry, Commerce, Agriculture and Fisheries. So he, he was promoted recently, two weeks ago, and now been reassigned. Now, as chairman of the committee, let me indicate first of all that we'd like to, I'd, I'd personally like, and I think on behalf of the committee, to offer our congratulations to Member Campbell and to point out that in his time here, he has played a, a very important, a critical role um, where we, 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 we don't always agree, but he has been right enough times when agreeing with me that I, I, I think we can all, um, we can all say that he has made a, a sterling contribution to this committee and, and, and we, we wish him well. Uh, of course, there will be some discussions as a, a minister with our portfolio with responsibilities. He, he rightfully will not be on the committee, but we await the further um, confirmation of that. But certainly the, the committee will be poor for his absence. And for the records, we, I think, on behalf of all the members here, we wish him Godspeed. So, members, with that, I just move for some housekeeping. Can we, the, the minutes of the meeting held on June, July the 15th were sent out. Um, are there any corrections? If not, can I ask someone to move for the confirmation of the minutes? Member Stewart, member... Phillips. Okay, no matters arising for the minutes, so with that we would invite our guests to come in. New one. Before we proceed, um, Mr. Mr. 
Sir Thompson. Sir Thompson, at the last meeting, you had indicated that there was a master list and a, a recommended list, and you had furnished us with copies. They have gone to be copied, but at, uh, certainly I didn't receive any, and neither did the other members. There seemed to have been some, somewhere along the line it got hijacked. Do you have copies of those lists that we may, we can um, ask the our list to copy so that members, beautiful, thank you. Members, uh, given that we don't have those documents, should we start with the issue of the discussion with uh, Harlan? Yes? Okay, so this is what yeah. going on. Oh, this is the new list. All right. Okay. But there was a, all right. So this is the master list. Okay. Could we, we had a list of what? The last time we had gotten a list, I think I have it in the car, what was recommended? Just that. No, no, no. I have that. But it goes to the discussion today of.
Okay, members, are we ready to proceed? Um, Pierce, welcome back again. Um, Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, Pierce, today okay. we have two issues we're going to deal with. One has to do with RADA and the selection of farm roads, and the other has to do with uh, well, the Ministry of Agriculture, the SCJ, and specifically the Holland lands that we had had some discussion with. Uh, so, what I think maybe where we could start is to give us an idea of the where, where the 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 the. the the head of RADA and yourself had had a discussion last week with regard to the selection of the farm roads. And I think this is something, members, that has come before us repeatedly over the last few years. We've had a discussion. There are two things that we have insisted on here. It is the process of consultation all members of parliament are, are on both sides are very heavily invested in the agricultural sectors in their constituency. I find that even in the Kingston constituencies, they, they, they seem to have an interest in it as well. And of course, an important part of that is the farm roads. And what we have indicated is that there needs to be a, a, a degree of consultation there's a joined up government con concept. So members who meet with their parish offices regularly, there's a process of making some form of selection. This selection would, would form part of the consideration. And it's very important because, for example, when I go through the master list of farm roads of importance, so one of them is Orange Hill. Over the last year, we have been doing work on Orange Hill. And invested a lot in Orange Hill, and it is at a point now where it is 100% better than it was before. It would not necessarily be the priority on this list now because of work that had been done through the Four. NAA. Now, we as members of parliament take a coordinating approach. We also work with the local minist Ministry of Local Government and the Municipal Councils, which do work. So that coordination has to take place, so it's an important part of it. So. It has come to the committee. We have uh, uh, bilaterally, on both sides, uh, uh, have all agreed, recommended to, to, to Parliament this process of consultation, which is a normal process of consultation. But there is a concern that this is not being followed. So we have asked that we, we go through the process of how this selection process how the selection, what the criteria, and how it is done. So with that, I turn it over to you for you to, to indicate how we're going to go through that. But we'd like to carefully understand what and what is the process. So over to uh, you, please. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. And um, the Ministry of Industry, Commerce, Agriculture, and, and Fisheries is happy to appear again for the committee and, and, and members. I greet you all well. And uh, last week when we appeared, we were uh, advised that um, you needed a little time to go through the matters that were presented and that we were to return this week and take with us some of the principles that could um, provide the level of clarity that is needed. And so this morning, we are appearing with a full team to respond to the specifics surrounding the road program. Uh, team members from RAD, I will introduce them shortly. Mm -hmm. As well as the lands, sugar lands that are being um, uh, divested and leased and that sort of thing. We have a full team from the SCJH. And we also have Mr. Nigel Myrie, who is uh, chairman of RADA. And uh, the board was indicated as a part of the process with the farm road allocation as well as there were uh, a request for him to probably shed some light on some of the relationship between all cane, uh, which is a, a body that represents um, uh, farmers 
uh, farmer, sugarcane uh, farmers. And so he's the managing, is the secretary manager for all cane as well as he is the chairman. How, how is all cane uh, involved? Uh, just for me, not. How is all cane involved in that element? Just, just for clarity. Well, uh, all cane lease um, lands on behalf of farmers from the SCJH. So all of that will be explained. Oh, so, the, and this is happening over what period of time? Is a, well, it's, is a, is a, is a more, is a more or less, is a more or less recent development. But um, in the past, Alkin has always um, leased lands uh -huh. uh, on behalf of sugarcane farmers. All right, let's just take one thing at a time. Seems to be very intertwined. So let us let's start with the, the road roads, program, right. which I think mm -hmm. may be the simplest to go through. And I think it would be important for you to to shed some light on the procedure of how farm roads are selected. Okay. Um, before I do, let me just quickly introduce the person. Yo, here. Absolutely. My okay. Plan. All right. So uh, from the ministry itself, I am here, Dermond Spence, permanent secretary. Uh, Mr. Michael Price, gentlemen, could you just, uh, members, could you just please indicate. Mr. Michael Price is the chief technical director in the ministry. Ms. Anne-Marie Tomlinson is our principal financial officer. Mr. Delroy Coley is our senior director for strategic planning. And from the RADA, we have Mr. Nigel Myrie, who is the board chairman. Mr. Peter Thompson, who is the CEO. Ms. Young is here, is here? Ms. Marina Young is not here. Uh, Mr. Edward Gaynor, Director of Finance. Mr. Vaughn Barnaby, Senior Director for Planning and Project Management. And Mr. Pendergrass, the Director for Engineering Projects. And from the Sugar Company of Jamaica, we have Mr. Joseph Shukir, who is the Managing Director. And we have Mrs. Terry Joy Gulab, who is the Legal Officer. Um, in terms of the roads, um, Mr. Chairman, the Ministry of Finance submits as a part of our, or sent to us as a part of our Rural Road Development um, Program, which has been going on for years, um, monies to the Ministry, which is then transferred to uh, RADA to execute the road program. RADA prepares a budget and submit, and accordingly, whatever the Ministry of Finance grants, it's dispatched to RADA to execute the road program in full. And so the process that RADA uh, has to go through is one that uh, has been explained that involves consultation at the local level all the way up to the board for approval. In terms of the details, I will now hand over to uh, Mr. Thompson so that he can proceed in explaining the details in the process. Sir Thompson. And the chairman is here to yes, add as he sees fit, that, yes. uh, whatever support is needed. Good morning, members, um, ministry, rather, SCJ team, teams. As the PS mentioned, the farm road program is implemented by RADA um, through financing from the Ministry of Finance, through the ministry, MICOF. The program actually started some years ago, and we continue to build and execute on what we have. The current program um, involve the selection of roads at the community level and the extension officers would have worked with all the stakeholders, community groups in identifying roads in production areas. Uh, we also focus on roads in areas where there is likely to be take up of lands that can be used for production. So while we focus on production areas, we have other areas that you know, show good pot potential for agriculture and we look at those roads. When the roads are selected, they are compiled and submitted to the parish office where they will be further vetted 
by the parish manager and his team and the local advisory board. When that is done, a list, they would have prioritized what role they would want to see done in order of one, two, three, one being the highest priority. Uh, when it comes to the zonal office, it is further compiled. Now the zone um, rather has two zones, eastern zone, western zone. Western zone has seven parishes, six parishes rather. Eastern zone has seven parishes. So at the zonal office, they would compile a team there would compile all the roads coming in from all the parishes for the western zone, similar eastern zone. When that is done, a committee at the head office would merge the two zones, and then from that we would, um, you know, as allow engineers to look at the roads to ensure that Yes, these, these roads that are selected meet the criteria that we would have established. So we have an established criteria how we select roads. And we look at demographic information um, and also the condition of the roads, where the roads are located, etc., and the potential for agriculture. When all of that is done, a recommendation would be made to the board in consultation with myself and the board, and then a selection. Final selection would be done at the board level to include a um, broader team, and that is final. Then it is sent to procurement. Um, once it passes the, the test that we would have established, and procurement would have um, started the procurement process. So, basically, in a nutshell. So, it, it goes through the technical. Yes. And then it goes, you send a list to the board. Yes. Which is the list that we would have here. The, the master list plus the and list. The that master list and then a list of recommended. And then, and then the a board. list of recommended um, awards by the parish. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mary, welcome. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Absolutely. Uh, Mr. Mary, you're chairman of, of RADA. Yes, yes. Um, you took over from Mr. Stern. Yes, I took over from Mr. Stern. Absolutely. That was what, two years ago? 2019, March. Oh, last year? Yes. Oh, recent. Okay. Uh, could you just fill out the gaps now? The, 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 the recommendation comes to the yes. board. What does the board okay. do? So the, in, in addition to all of what uh, the CEO has said, there is a process that we've been implementing over the last two years, which is the establishment of the master database, because it is roads that are in the database that become eligible for selection, and the roads that are in the master base must go through a process of verification. That verification includes the collection of particular demographics including the number of farmers, the type of crops that are grown in the area, the animal husbandry that takes place, an estimate of the hectares that are in production, the value of the production from the previous year, the impact of the investment, we spoke about the potential of the area, as well as the, and a, 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 guess, a guesstimate of what needs to be done in respect of repairs to the particular road. We also estimate the length of the road and with that, uh, a, a value that is, is ascribed in respect of how much a particular length of road would require for repairs. So these are just information that guides us. When the roads, the, the, the database has been in, in construction over the last two years. So when the list comes to the board, if the demographics are incomplete, we can't approve those roads at that point in time. So we'd send those roads back to the parishes to complete the demographics so that they may know the road, but when we are approving, we don't have that data and therefore we can't make a decision on them. So we'd send them back, they would fill in those demographics and it makes it back to the next round when we approve again, because it's an iterative process because not all the roads are approved in one sitting. So there are several times that the 
the, the roads come. And in this particular year, we had a, an initial budget of 1.25 billion. So we started out going after a much larger program. And so the first list that was prepared took, in con took into consideration a 1.25 billion target. And so we would have started assigning roads to parishes and by extension uh, constituencies on the basis of 1.25 billion. When the budget was cut as a result of COVID-19, we then had to call back that list and to do a review so that we could then reallocate to fit. And that is the list that we got two weeks ago. The list that you Three got weeks two weeks ago. ago overshot the budget by about under 200 million uh, because we were hoping to go back to the ministry to ask for some more money. Because having gone and selected the roads, we're hoping that we could negotiate with the ministry and to advocate Minister of Finance for some more funds so that we could do that, that program. However, a part of the assignment of roads to constituencies is a, is a layered approach. So we, there's, we go through at first and, and parishes or constituencies which do not fit the criteria of an agricultural constituency would not be eligible. So a central Kingston, which doesn't fit the criteria that we currently have, would be eliminated. On the next pass, we assign a road to all of those parishes that fit the, the criteria at the primary level. We then intensify the level of agriculture at the next pass. So we assign a second road to parishes which have that higher level of agricultural activity. We then go a third level and a fourth level. So in this particular iteration that you have, the last list that you just got today, we would have peeled back some of those layers, right, to ensure that all of the constituencies are covered within the budget that we have of 525 million, and also that any omissions, because sometimes we overlook a constituency inadvertently, any omissions would have been resolved in the process. Okay, so, well, let me just start by saying that the, I've taken a look at the list, but it appears to me we've gotten a new list today. Having had the discussion last week, we have now been furnished with a new list, which looks like it has dramatically changed. There was some change to it, because yeah. we had to well, remove some well, we can right? go through, there, there, yes. there are some major changes to it, but again, all right, so let me just follow this through. The parish offices will look at the roads and make an evaluation. Send it to the central office, the regional central. They will then go through and technically make a, 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 a we we'll go to the board with a suggestion. Yes. And then the board will look at it and say, well, these are the roads and, and fit it into funding and put, is that generally how the system we works? Fit it into budget as well as to apply it, well, see if it fits from the, the, the master list. So it has to come from the master list and Absolutely. it must have all the demographics that we can make a judgment. All right, so, so really there are two things. One, how is it then that roads that are not recommended by RADA are finally selected by the board? to be rehabilitated. Because at, at some point in time, we have to start the road program. And when the database was being prepared, the demographics that came in and were ready, are we could select from those roads. So if, when the first set of roads came in, we had some of them in the database ready with demographics, but some of them were not there, we put other roads in which had demographics available. All right, so once we found it in this, database, we would say to management, management, what about this road, since those roads are not ready, right? Could we include this? Because here it is, for example, Banbury to Victoria in a particular parish. It has a certain amount of hectares. You have $72 million in production last year. Why couldn't we include this at this point in time for this particular constituency? So you're saying that's not done by the local offices or the rather Central and board? No, so we would do it at the meeting with the management when, when, when they come for approval, right? because we have a timeline in which to get the road program out. Because if we don't get it through by a certain time, we have 
the, the rainfall that comes into the, the weather that comes in and affect the road program. So we have to ensure that we get the road program fast-tracked. This year, we started in March, actually, to get this road program through. So while the database was being developed, we would have only had those roads that were completed by the parishes in respect of the demographics to select from. But Mr. O'Mary, I'm, I'm still not understanding your, your, your point. The board you. has gotten a number, I, I, I see recommendations for like 15 roads in, in a parish that I'm familiar with. And then what comes back is a, a different selection. And I, and I say this, that one of the things we must be careful of and why this committee needs to be involved is that the roads are selected for the right reasons. And if you have recommendations from the technical persons for 15 roads, you would have to have a rationale for going outside of that. Okay. Now, I'm not getting where that rationale because it seems to be, quite frankly, very frequent in this. So then it means that the board is taking on its own the technical aspect of determining what it thinks coming are the more important roads to be done. Coming out of, coming out of the recent Auditor General's report was a, a, a criticism of subjectivity in the selection of the road process. And so we wanted to remove that subjectivity of pointing to individuals who select roads and to develop the database, which then, once a road is in the database, it is a qualified um, road. That's not the point, Mr. Mary. The point I'm trying to make is that the, you have a database, database, and that database is a technical evaluation is done as to what are the most important roads by the competent authorities, the technical officers. They give you a selection of maybe 15. And then what you find coming out is other roads which were not selected at all and done by the board. So I'm trying to get from you how you arrive at that. How do you make that decision? Because, well, go ahead, because we can... It's, it's not done by the board. It's done in collaboration with the management because we don't go away and do it. We sit in the, in the board meeting and we go through the list as we are sitting now. We go through the list parish by parish and if the road at the time that it is presented, the demographics are not ready, we cannot proceed with it. All right, so we either look for another road or postpone that particular road. So, so when you say road not ready? The demographics in the database was a work in progress. So where you have the estimated hectares of crops, animals, number of farmers, the estimated value of production, that took a significant amount of time to complete. And we had committed to the Auditor General at the PAC at the last sitting that we would align the road selection to the master database. We, we, no, we're going a step further. I'm agreeing with you. What I'm saying is that coming out of the database, the technical officers listed a road, a list of roads that are priorities. But they, they may have listed a road, um, Chairman, which the demographics were not ready. We couldn't proceed when you with say it. demographics not ready? Yes, yeah. but the list, it's over time. So, so the list you have now is an updated list where at the time that we were meeting in March, some of these would not have been completed. This is months away from March. So there was a significant amount of time and that, effort put hold in. Hold on, wait, wait. That, what was not completed, Mr. Mayor? No, but with due respect, Mr. Chairman, can no, I? Mr. Clark, I think the point that we're trying to make, you have a list, which is your master list. We have no problem with the master list, right? We have a, absolutely, we have a list of all that was here. No, what I'm saying to you, just one second. Can I one provide second, some? One second, Mr. Clark, so what has happened is that a list went to the board, which is this list, which indicates a number of roads 
that are recommended by RADA to the board. So obviously these roads are on, they're all on the master list. Not only are they on the master list, this is the recommended roads based on their technical expertise. This list goes to the board. And what has happened is that the board has selected a number of roads that are not on this list. Hence the question we're asking is why is it they would deviate from that in such a widespread? In other words, they're selecting roads well, that Mr. are Chair, not the priority well, roads Mr. Chairman, of the technical what officers. I'm, what I'm hearing from Mr. Myrie is that roads that are on this list the demographics that require that is required to make it to the final list weren't in place and therefore they had to go back to the listing to choose roads that were are of the nature of having the things in place that weren't selected by the, the committees by the by rather technical personnel that's what he's saying that the only reason why you're seeing those roads that you're querying is simply because some of the roads that were here that was recommended could not have gone forward because they had a commitment to the integrity commissioner contractor general whosoever the person is for them to provide something and they were still outstanding in in terms of some of the roads did not have all the, the specs so are you suggesting that rather just just a question i am i am merely i am merely interpreting i am merely interpreting what I heard from and Mr. Mary, my you, understanding. You I that have nothing to do with the what board. Said, yes. So what is being suggested is that rather technical officers are sending a list to the board of roads that cannot be um, cannot be rehabilitated? No, not, could, is no, that no, 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 not that they cannot be okay. rehabilitated. That's not what he's been saying. The, 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 the database compilation, the, the database. Yeah. And I'm trying to get the information. <laughs> all right, all right, yes. The, the database compilation starts with a, a recommendation of a road to RADA. So when the, when the road goes into the da database initially, there are no demographics. The, the extension officers have to go out and to find the road, have to develop those demographics, have to input That's those demographics. That's a recommendation from whom? The recommendations come from all, all, all sources. It comes from members no. of parliament, councillors, no. farmers, no. everybody. All right. All right, please, members. The good thing is that we have all protagonists here. So let us just clarify. Um, Mr. Thompson, I'm not quite certain <coughs> what, what is being suggested. Th th this master list, this is a master list of, of all rather roads. Would you want to just tell us, uh, because I don't want to put in my words. So, what, what, what does this master list really entail? Well, the master list is a list that is compiled at the parish level, and it feeds into a bigger list. Um, the master list is continually being updated. So as we, find, as we go along and find new roads, yeah, we're, at it, we're at them. Absolutely. And one of the recommendations is that these roads, once it is qualified as a farmer, as a road to be done, then we start the process of getting the demographic information. All right. So, so this list now, yes. which is a recommended list, what, how, this list now, you have, you send this to the board. Well, it, it's a part of the bigger list. What okay. my technical director do is just to pull them out and put them together. So it usually it is a part of this. Right. Yeah. It, it, in other words, to make this list, right. you have to be part of this yes, list. Yes, yes, yes. But these are the roads that your parish 
people will... and organization look at and prioritize mm. as a list. Yes. So, so, which is the point I'm making. So these are your technical persons who make this list, yeah. and then the roads. This list is sent to the board. Yes. So I'm I'm I'm, I'm simply making the point. J just as a question, what the chairman is saying is that these roads that are recommended are not being, or some of them are not being adopted. They're picking new roads because these roads don't have the demographics. I'm not certain I quite understand that. Um, Chairman, all roads that we submit, we provide demographic information. So all these roads in, that in, are in recommended in in would have demographic, would yes. have the information of it. Yeah, because... Because you have to have that to have selected the road. Yeah, yes. Well, the roads come as a highlight in the major document. Yes. When we go through the document, it was incomplete at the time that the list came to the board. Many of the roads did not have adequate demographics. There was missing, missing cells, uh, missing estimation of value, missing number of farmers. We didn't know what type of crops were grown there. We didn't know a lot of the things that were required for the demographics. So we would suggest that. On the recommended that list? Of the recommended list. So some of them could go through, some of them could not go through. Right? So we send them back to the parishes and say, complete the demographics. But then how do you then pick roads? Because, the, understand, because th let me just say this. They don't recommend three roads. They're recommending upwards of, of six roads, of which you probably would pick four. Or where two, where or is one. it that you go, offside, go, go outside the off stump and start selecting new roads? You just go through it and pick some roads. Because it's a board decision solely, right? Because once the roads are in the, the database and the demographics are complete, the roads qualify and can be selected. Because in in the conversation with the with the auditor general, roads that are selected must qualify on the basis that it made it to uh, to the database. It is a farm road and therefore it is in need of repairs. Our responsibility through the management is to ensure that the demographics are completed. Right? And as I said earlier, it's a phased process because they started out firstly only with the names of road. Because this is a new process. This just started last year. Right? This compilation just started a year ago. It's, you know why this is, and I'm going to have members talk, but you know why it is? troubling to me. I've indicated that, uh, and, and you're from West Milan, there are certain communities that are known for farming. The Sheffield area were fixed a number of the roads. There are one or two that are that need work. Blue River Bath Mountain, Jerusalem Mountain, and the New Hope Red Road, which we have done some work but needs completion. These are areas that I have sat with the road office, we have discussed it. These are the priority. Anyone that knows farming, and you as chairman of RADA would probably, I would, I would see how you would disagree with anything I've said, but yet these aren't the roads that are being selected in large part. However, they are on the list. So I make the point that the discussion, the, where we are starting is, A, we are not necessarily having the discussions with the members of parliament and two, some of what is being selected is, I think the word you use, subjective at best. Jerusalem Mountain, as you mentioned, just speak, is a road that is to be done. It I, 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 I got the letter. Uh -huh. I wasn't speaking specifically, but right. I'm well, happy for it because it has been a, I've gone through every permutation to get it done right. simply because it is such a circuitous route and it should not be, is the point I'm making. So the, the road that came initially, when the internal auditor assessed the road, it was recommended to, to management that it is not a farm road. And therefore we had to stop that road and we asked for a replacement road. 
and Jerusalem Mountain was suggested, and the board approved it. And Mr. Mary, um, you know, I have written to the minister four months ago, and I don't want this to become parochial, so I'm, I'm going to come up, but indicated that it was important, and I invited through the minister you, and I saw where it was copied to you, to tour and look at the roads, because I have the same concern about roads that are being fixed. Hence the discussion today, because quite frankly, roads that are fixed for the wrong purposes will mean that we will not achieve our goals in agriculture. Therefore, there needs to be fulsome discussion between all concerned parties, and at the end of the day, there's no reason why both the elected representatives, the technical officers, and the politically appointed boards cannot sit down and agree on what is best for our agricultural sector. And that's the point yes. I think that we here have been making for the longest while. Yes. Yeah, I take, I take your, your, your suggestion, uh, Chairman. But in addition to, 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 to that, there's a budget constraint. And when the, the wish lists come from the parishes, we can't always accommodate five and six and seven roads that come from the parishes. Also going forward, Chairman, this database must and will be shared with all constituents of the CEO, right? And it is from this database that we expect that the suggestion should come so that going forward and in the future we don't have the problem, right? Because the roads are here. There is no dispute about whether the roads are farm roads or not farm roads. And once they come to the board for, as a recommendation, they can be selected. A member, well, member Stuart is chomping at the bit. And I have member Witter and member Jacks and member Phillips. I take it in that order. Well, everything is relative, member Jacks. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Member Stuart. Oh, you, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you, thank you, Chairman. Uh, I am looking at the the list here, Mr. Myrie, uh, which speaks to last updated 13 of the 17, 2020. And I'm somewhat um, astonished to see, while I am happy for the roads um, in South Manchester, but I was question, how were they selected? You spoke of consultation. I wish to state categorically, Mr. Myrie, that I, there was no consultation with the Member of Parliament, the elected representative for South Manchester, as it relates to the six roads that have been selected here. Um, I'm not calling them. I've said that I'm happy for them. I did say that early on, Member Clark, that I'm extremely happy. But I'm saying, how were they selected without the Members of Parliament um, input, who is the elected representative? These are roads that are taken by surprise by the MP. And I'm saying that it cannot be that roads are chosen at the back of the Member of Parliament who is elected representative. We should be consulted. We have, we have sworn to it. I have sworn to the parish manager, the, the parish manager, the RADA chairman for Manchester. And formally, I was consulted. And this has come as a surprise. If I were not sitting on the PAC, I would not know. And going forward, this cannot be at all. This cannot be accepted at all as elected representative for a constituency. Can, before I move on, can I, uh, uh, Member, Member Clark, you're making a valid point. I think it's important. Members in here who have actually been consulted on their farm roads, uh, uh, could you indicate if you have if you have been consulted on which roads are to be selected? No, to what is we? Yeah, but then, but so have I. But it has not reflected in the final decisions. So that's the point. Have, 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 have your roads? Have you had consultation? And is it reflected? What? It's only zinc fence. You know, <laughs> your, your, your farming is limited. All right. We have one era, the Flower Hill era, which. Does but then it's a easy because it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a yes, but I, I everything will be done in that area. I know era. that they have had well, parish, parish consultation. Member Jackson, Member Daly, have you, in other words, there's a, what we're discussing, Member Witter, you are, 
a big farming community. So you have had consultation I, as is it reflected in your I, roads? I have the biggest farming community in Jamaica. Right. I was consulted I was consulted by the parish office. But I can what I have here is not reflecting is not reflected. Yeah, yeah. So I come to the problem. point, Mr. Myrie, that RAD as an organization is doing its work. We are all being consulted. We are all determining within with the officers what are the communities and the roads that are most needed. These are sent in a recommendation to you but what is being selected is not reflective of the consultation. So we're trying to find out on the basis of what does the board make its considerations. As long as the, board, the, the, the roads make it to this list, Chairman, the roads are eligible for repairs. All right, so as I said before, if at the time that the roads are being presented, for approval, if they're not ready in the database, then they cannot go forward. And also, we can't accommodate all of the requests because we have a budget limitation. Member Witter, you, I, I apologize. No, you had wanted, you, yes. you're, you're in line. Please, right. please proceed. Right. My, the problem I have here um, in terms of the process not reflecting what we would have um, spoken about in the consultation process. Uh, for example, in St. Elizabeth, I see one, two, three, four roads that is saying Southeast St. Elizabeth, Southeast St. Elizabeth, Southeast St. Elizabeth. And none of them is in Southeast. Not one of them. What constituents are they in? The, these are southwest. Yeah. Yeah. One, two, three, four. Four roads. The, 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 the first four, except for Dunderhill. All of them are saying southeast, and they're not in southeast. So I ended up only have of the roads that are selected for southeast. There are 16 roads in St. Elizabeth that have been selected. Only one Repeat that. There are 16 roads, and 16 you have one of the largest farming areas. Largest. And you get one road. One of 16. But wait, six, wait a second. 16 roads? 16. That's a lot of roads. Um, some, can, some, some, some parishes get three. So, as I one. said, there's a, there's a real. And, and, so there's, and, there's some problem there. There's some problem. So, Mary, over to you. Well, let All right. De member Daly. Because it is following up on member, uh, member in respect to Cayman as to Glade, I see where you have uh, um, West Central St. Catherine, that is in Eastern St. Catherine as well. So Cayman as to Glade, and I'm certain there is no more Cayman as to Glade that would have fallen unless there is another parish that have the same um, naming. But just to add to what is being said, I have been trying to establish how the board, apart from all of what you would have given them, is there no other input after you present to the board that the extension officers or the parish managers would have made before a final decision is taken, bearing in mind that you do not have, you have budget constraint. So therefore, while the board would have made their decisions, but the fact that you do not have to look at all the ones that are urgent, there is no other consultation being made after you use your budgetary constraint to make your decisions that you would go back to the extension officer and your parish manager. I just want to know the process. Uh, no, the, 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 once the roads are, are approved, it goes to 
the procurement um, process does not go back to the parish except to advise them what are the approved rules. Um, so that's, that's what happens in, in that, at that step. The, 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 the other thing is that we do, the, 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 the assignment of constituency comes from the parish. So I don't know the different demarcations in respect of which road belongs to which constituency. So I, I have to go on the basis of what is here. All right, I'm, I'm, all right, I have, yeah, Mr. The, the, Mr. I think, Mr. Mary. I think she's using the, the master list. Mr. Mary. Yes, sir. I, I think part of the problem we have here, and I'm, everyone is going to say their, put their issues, but a, a large part of it is coming back to what you said about subjectivity. You were appointed last year um, after the former chairman resigned amid speculation and the news said the call comes as State Minister Rodish Benzer is facing criticism for a comment he made suggesting JLP supporters will be favored by RADA now that Mr. Stern, who is a high profile JLP member, is chairman of the entity. Now this is coming from the news and it's a number of news outlets and this was before he stepped down and you have taken over. And I think part of the problem we have is the subjectivity that is being shown with the selection of these roads, deviating from what is recommended and being selected by the board. And, and I, I myself am not clear, you know, how you arrive at these and why it is that members of parliament and both sides of the house seem to have no connection whatsoever with the selection process of the board. Every member of parliament on both sides is indicating they're in touch with their organization of RADA. It is going through the recommendations and then going to the board and then the board, it's a, a different thing. So you understand our consternation. Absolutely. Well, let me, yes, you are As I in said, line. Mr. Mary, I heard you listen, you tried to listen carefully. You said on the one hand, you complete a database where you collect the profile of these roads and put them in a database. And you went ahead and select some roads based on the database. And you made much emphasis on the database. And then you have some roads that were to be filled in, so to speak, more roads and MPs and other, many other persons make recommendation, recommendations and that's how you come up with the list. Now the database, you can have a road where you have the complete data. Might be minimally used, maybe not being used, what have you. Isn't there somebody who goes out or would make representation about the demand yes. for a particular road that caused you to make a decision on this road. Because if, when I listen to you carefully, you know, the roads could be computer selected based on what you emphasize, the database. And quite frankly, Mr. Mr. Myrie, this argument about the database as the basic basis of selection, in my judgment, is nonsense. It's a red herring because where you have in this country where there's a limited resources exactly. and more needs, you are going to make some decision based upon situations out there which are not abstract yeah. and that database can become abstract. So somebody, and when I'm listening to my colleagues on both sides, it bears out because farmers, let me tell you something. Both us members of parliament, you guys bigger than them, and them can't reach you. So they go to the councillor, they go to their members of parliament to make the representation. And then we would go to the entity to say, consider this amongst your menu of roads to be selected. But the point I'm trying to make is that listening to you, 
and you make this emphasis about database as a basis of selection, I would respectfully tell you I don't believe that. Some persons make representation to you, whether it's a minister or whoever else. And listen to that and believe that that is gospel. Because I live in Jamaica. I know what happened out there. And all of us here can attest to it. So, so, don't, so don't tell me that it's exclusively database why you select those roads. Tell me that there is some compelling reasons that have been brought to your attention. And, and, and I can buy that. Com compelling reasons also include MPs who make representation on, their, on behalf of their constituencies. So there are compelling reasons Could you, could you clarify that for me? Because, because as I said to you, I've, I've gone as far as to speak to the minister and see I'm successive about the same things. And I'm making the point that it doesn't seem to change what comes down. And, I, and I'm saying it's not on one side. So let, which, I, I don't know which MPs. Let, let me say this then. Because, Mr. Oh, Mary, that goes back to the very problem that we're trying to get away from. So they're saying that MPs that go to the board are the ones that are going to get a favorable selection? I'm not saying that MPs come to the board. So where do they go to? They speak to the, the, the management? No. All, and I'm making the point that the list and the suggestions that are being made by the MPs and the management and not be the ones that are being selected by the board. Well, this is not something being said by one side of the house, it's by both. Given this is a work in progress, all right? What's a work in progress? This is a work in progress. No, that's a process. master list. The master I'm talking list, about the selection the is the problem. List, the selection is a work in progress. And therefore, I'm recommending that we allow the process to evolve so that next year, when everybody has this list, and everybody make their recommendations from this list through the parishes, and it comes back up, you will realize that you will not have the challenges because the database is significantly completed now. All the roads should have the demographics now, CEO, right? And any road that come in that is in this database can be accommodated. Because that is where we're trying to go. I have something to say to that. But Member Phillips, I, I don't want to. Mr. Amari. Yes, sir. Just following the conversations um, that took place before. And you have recommendations coming from very different organizations, farmers group, um, individuals, whatever. Then from that, you'll compile a list of those roads that were recommended, yeah? Yes, the management would compile a list and say. Yeah, management, yes. because management would, whoever gets a call and then speak to management. And management will then go out and do the assessment of the roads, meaning your technical team from the list that you have compiled. Right or wrong? Yes, Mr. Thompson? No, no. Right? So, there's so, there's no, you said management time, there's, no. There's phases. So, the, when the roads are, are suggested for inclusion in the database, that is step one. Yes. Those, those roads then have to be evaluated to be yeah. verified yeah, man. for the database. That's the point I'm making. So, yeah. management, your engineering team would go out and look at the roads. Not at that phase. The engineering <coughs> team goes out when they're doing the scoping. This is after the roads are approved. Well, all right, you don't get, when, when I forget so technical. Your management team go out to verify the roads to see if there are farmers there, if the road is actually a farm road, yes. whatever. Yeah? So that's step two, all right? Yes. Then the management team now the database is updated. would know update their database, and from that database would then make a recommendation to the board for roads to be done in that financial year. Right or wrong? Correct. Okay? And then the board now will, or supposed to, 
from the recommendation from management now approve what should be done or not. Yeah? But what we're seeing happening probably or most likely vary from that that we just listed out, the, the various steps. And, and, and hear me out why. I am one who, as a member of parliament, I'm, I'm always in contact with your, your, your head office, the parish office, um, the PS himself, try to get an understanding, especially on the farm roads, because we never yet have enough money to do roads, and we know the roads. If, it's a, if you're an MP that know your constituency, you'll know the roads that, that needs to be affected. I was called by my parish manager to make some recommendations. Eh? And it would seem as if there is a communication issue with RADA and the political representatives. Because I would expect that after compiling your list, that that will be shared with the member of parliament, that these are the roads that are recommended. But it is up to the board now to decide which ones are priority. On the roads that I have, I, I made a recommendation on. And it would be interesting to see the list that you would have gotten up to December of 2019. It, I, I, if, Chair, if that is possible, that com starting of the master list, it would be yeah, because a lot be, of roads have it come would on be in very the, interesting in the last yeah. year, which is which is an important part of the discussion. So let's somewhere. use in my own constituency a, a community, Medstone to Adams Valley, which is a, I mean, the, the first time they got light was 2012, and that is straight farming, huh? hardly any residents living around there straight farming. But then now, I got a call from a contractor a few months ago, right? this was probably about March, to say that he has been contracted to do a road, a farm road in my constituency. I said, oh. I asked him the name of the road. It's a Spice Grove. So okay, let's go. Um, tell me which day you're going around there. I'll accompany you. Well, people nearly stone around there. Yeah? Because when we told them that the road is going to be done, they said, but where the farmers, them there, kind of farming not going around there? <laughs> On your own list here that you have provided, this master list, shows that there's only two hectares of farming around there. Yeah? But yet still a community like Midstone has 20 hectares of farming, but has not been considered. Yeah? You have a road, that Gay Hill Road that you have done, and that road coming up for the last two years. Every time that you're doing a, a list, it keeps coming up, and I'm asking, where did that recommendation come from? No, 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 and, and, no, no, and I'm not even talking Gay Hill Road, yeah? I talk, I have Linhurst and I have Breeze Hole, and Breeze Hole keep coming up on the list, and I keep saying to the, to, 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 to the parish manager and the team, but I just, but a road was just done right across the ridge from there, so why do another one there when there are other areas that need, and it just keep coming up, keep coming up, yeah? You did Gay Hill Road, but Gay Hill Road is incomplete. The money could only do the blasting to facilitate a roadway, but then it stopped less up. So it's not paved, it's just still just stone and dirt. You know, and it gives me the impression that those that are recommended by management to come to the board for approval that the board itself is not taking all recommendations but also making their own changes. Yeah? Because if it, that, is, that is what I would derive from every time that I get 
an approval for a road and then by the time things supposed to come surpass, you hear a different set of road. You know? And it never happens in my constituency because farm road, farming is something that is a lifeline of my constituency. So when I am choosing a road or making a list of roads, it is never on the demographic of how many voters I have in there or how many I don't. Eh? Because they, they, your team can't tell you they, they went up into one community that, to do a road. I only have 13 votes inside there. 13, so it doesn't really matter to me. No. But it, what I want is to ensure that the farmers can get access to. I am happy there that Can we're in Breeze Hole reasons. now. I don't have no vote at Breeze Hole, but I'm happy because it's young farmers. But it would not be a priority right now when you have places like, like, like uh, Medstone, eh? a bottom um, Redford, you have the John's Hall. The John's Hall to Medina via Hepburn Hall is not even as a parish council road, but it's on the list. Yeah? And, and, and I say to you, Mr. Chairman, that the board is getting too involved in the selection of roads. And that should not be. Leave that to the and technical persons and have the technical persons select the road. But the board should not be. And I'm not saying that the board can make a recommendation or two, sir, yes. But it should not be a can't blank change in what comes from because I am sure because if that is not the case then what he's saying to me is that the management is incompetent if that if the final list that they are sending is the one that is being approved right by the board and I'm sure you don't have incompetent management huh? right so if to, to just end Leave it to the technical people. And the board should do less of the changing and selection of farm roads, even which parish get more resources from what when it comes to, 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 to fertilizer, seeds, black tanks. Believe me. Well, I, well, I tell you something. Well, I, I tell you something. If you want to go down that road. Eh? I'd love you to tell me how many bags of Irish potato come to Manchester. Right? What? I don't As know. a member of parliament, I have never been called to make a recommendation of farmers. We even have lists, even if you don't want me to take the recommendation, each member of parliament submit a list for persons who ask for fertilizer and seeds. So even if you don't want to take my word, and each farmer has to have an ID and your technical team general go out there to find out if they are farmers. Never, much less a bag of fertilizer. Yeah? And for me, it is it, 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 the, the, both the parish oversight teams, they are getting too involved in what is happening in the operations of RADA and you are not getting the results of what we should get production-wise and even for benefits to go out to some of the farmers. Man start, man, I got called to say, man, get more potato seeds than land that him have. Yes. And I remember saying it to a minister, a minister recently, and his response to me was that, well, at least I'm still get it, but I'm just have to pay a little more for it. I'm telling you. All right. The, the management, the management prepares the, the the list, the distribution list that goes to the parish. That then comes to the board as information. This is what we got. This is what is going to go to the parishes. The, the PIP, um, in response to, to that. Respond to All the right. farm but road one. Yeah. We'll get the, to that. Because the, the farm road, stay, we stay within our. We we want to to focus on on adhering to a process that is being put in place, right? And I ask you to work with us, and let's evolve, okay, right? Let's Mr. evolve into next year. Mr. Mary, no. I, I'm telling you, as, as a member of parliament, part of the problem, it cannot operate like that. Because at the end of the day, neither yourself 
or any of the others are going out there when the persons in the constituencies are complaining about not being able to get their produce out. And then when the roads are selected based on the wrong criteria, you sit in the air-conditioned room and want to make the decision, but don't even come and walk on the road and have the discussion with the people in the communities. I have extended the invitation specifically for that reason. I did not And I'm just invitation. saying to you that there is a reality to this because, quite frankly, there is concern amongst all here that what is the selection process is flawed at the level of the board. So Chairman, at the can level I, of the board. Can I? Um, yes. Why is the board getting involved in the selection? The board has to approve the roads. Yeah, but why? why, why uh, when, no, when, when, in when, selection, not approval. When, when, when the roads come to the board, they have to go complete the process. That, that, that gets to us. If there is no completion of that process, we can't so approve the So are road. you saying to me that Mr. Thompson and his team send you a list without the process being completed before it gets to the board? To, uh, to the board itself? A road might be considered important before the demographics are completed. No, I understand no. that, but no, you, are, no, you no, said no. earlier, you know, that the list that come to you, you may not. So when they are selecting that list to come to the board, are you saying to me that they send, a, they send roads without the, the demographics yes, the list being comes, done? the list comes early, but the, the demographics are not completed when the list is sent in. So they have their priority lists that they know the roads. I don't know the roads, right? So when the list comes in, right, this is what we, we work from, right, to see that the information is there, that but the qualifying Mary, and Mr. criteria so are Mr. 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 Mary, place. as a question, following on that, is it true that the board has recommended and the advisory committee had recommended to the local road office that they go and look at a number of other roads to be put onto this master list within the last year? A lot of roads have come in for requests for roads to be done and we send them to management. Management right. send and, them to the and, parish. And a number of these roads that were sent out in the last year, roads that are now being selected? I, I, I can't say. I so don't know. I you know to, it's very to easy to verify, it. Mr. Mary. I'd have to, I'd very have to look easy at it. to verify. Chairman, Chairman. Mr. Thompson. When you are sending your list to the board for approval, you just send a list of names of roads, or the the the, the demographics is added to that list. And, and no. but with due respect, we have the recommendation here with the demographics on it. No, I just want to hear what. Isn't this the list that you get, Mr. Because that, that's prepared over time. The demographics aren't put over time. No, but I. Just allow, just allow, Mr. Thompson. Turn off the microphone, Mr. 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 Mary, this was given to Go you. Ahead, Mr. The list didn't come to sure. three weeks ago. Sure. I would not send an com incomplete list to the board because that would show my incompetence. Okay. So when you are preparing the list for the board to approve, approve. for any period of any roads that to be constructed. You have the name of the road, the, 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 the it, length of the road, just it, like it, this. It appears as how just you Just like this. Yeah. And this is what would go to the board. Yeah. The, the yeah. Master, what is happening here? This is just a pullout from the master, the master list. list. Yes. So this is what you get, Mr. Amiri. This is no, what. I don't get that. You don't get, get this for approval. I get the master list with highlights. I get this full database with highlighted roads. Right? And when the master list came to us, a lot of the roads had incomplete demographics. We had significant conversation and, and, and heated discussion at the board, and I can go back and get the board minutes and provide it to you in respect of why is it at this late stage that the, the list is coming to the board incomplete. Right? When many of these roads were sent out long ago, Right? So I, I don't know how we're having this conversation right now. No, it is, it is one to have. <laughs> All right. Let me, let me just say, this is, I, I, I think that the, the crooks of what the issue are, 
the crux of what the problem is has been highlighted. I, I, I don't know that we can well, I think I can every chairman. element of it. No, Chairman, yeah. but I think you can make a recommendation yes, absolutely. From, from, from this committee because it is wholly unsatisfactory, the process that we're hearing. It, it, it needs to involve greater consultation amongst members of parliament, and I believe that this committee has the authority, indeed the power, to recommend a cessation, a holding of this project until those things are properly put in place. And we are satisfied that this, spe this spend will be done in an appropriate manner. Yeah, because um, it's a chair, Pierce, based yeah. upon what I'm seeing here, I don't think the, the, what the challenges that we face here, I don't think it is just as a result of the decision made by the board, because I think, but, but when I see for example, my own situation in Southeast, where a number of us being named as Southeast Saint Elizabeth, which is, and it is not. Then there is also some challenges as it relates to the initial selection from maybe the parish or the yes. So I don't yeah. think it's really a board itself. I think it's from all right, Pierce, <laughs> from because up, I, I, I we are going to be taking it from yeah. here. Yes, yes. All right. Um, we have gone on for some time as a chairman, and what is clear yeah. is that the, the communication, yes, and consultation is not as, since I've, not I've, since I've become permanent secretary and I've been coming here about this road business, it has always been that there's need for strengthening of the consultation. Uh, at some, the, the Auditor General report, uh, has placed some recommendation that two processes are taking place at the same time. We're trying to adhere to the recommendation because one of the criticism is that there's need for the establishment of a database because they indicate that roads are being selected willingly without no reference to road being farm road and that's why we cannot continue that way. So that process is taking place. I think where the confusion is coming in is that while we are developing the database, we're trying to use it to manage the process. So the database needs to be established, but in the interim, the consultation cannot be neglected in selecting the road as the database is developed. So the Auditor General go further and indicated that there's need for some steps where certain interests would be separated from so that the process become more transparent and what I mean is internal so that the same person that is identifying the road is not the same person awarding contracts and stuff like that. So those processes are being fixed and I think that there's a little bit of confusion in terms of the, the steps but certainly what the ministry is going to do in calling in the, 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 the RADA team including the board and arranging a meeting with our minister is to ensure that it is established that the consultation must be a priority and priority to the final stage. Meaning, if the roads that are submitted by management falls outside of the purview of the budget and there's need for rationalization, then once there's a recommended sum of money to be spent, then consultation must go back to the community level, including the representative, same set of stakeholders to indicate that if you had indicated that you need 10 roads and you can't get 10, you need to select a priority five or whatever the case may be. I think that step is missing and I think the, the whole matter of the, the establishment of the database, there's need for some clarity on that. I want to be sure that the stakeholders are satisfied with the database too. So that is to be shared. And, and the, the matter of the boundaries, sometimes because you know um, we are not astute with the Northwest and the Southwest and all of that, those clarifications are, are needed as a part of setting up the database. So that when a final road is selected, we don't get into a situation where member Wita could be saying that it, the road is really Southwest when it should be Southeast. But Pierce, so, Pierce I'm with you. Can I but allow the, allow the 
the, 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 the consultation no. with management no, no, I am and the board stop selecting roads. I, I am with you. That's that's but that's where I'm going without being as explicit as you member. You're I going saying there without that saying we do it not explicitly. Want, we do not want li listen 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 please. I do not want the program to stop. So while I, I take guidance, uh, we have a constraints it's, it's work no, in progress. I, no. So but I'm saying to you what you have here are our political representatives and both sides that have severe challenges with what has been selected. And I'm saying to you, I don't mind, I, I'm, I'm inclined to agree with my colleague from East Kingston. No, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, Chair, Mr. Chair, may not have a lot of farm Mr. Roads, Chairman, let me finish now. But, <laughs> all right, I will allow you I to I am finish. saying, stopping the process, seizing the activity will not help the process because what we need to do is bridge a gap now with having the quick consultation to ensure that the roads that are selected are in consultation with the representatives and get the program going. So in terms of stopping now, we're not going to be executing this. Well, l listen I, me out, please. I, I, we're I, not going to be executing this as presented. We're going to just stop it, have the quick consultation, ensure that things are aligned, send it and back proceed to us with next the week Wednesday. We yes. don't require your presence. I will send it out to the members. And if they are, if, if we can deal with it by basis of consultation, all members, I'm going to deal with it of the House. I'm not going to be a, I, I have no issue with it. it it's going. Your mic, your mic. I was very struck by the disconnect or variance between what the chairman representing the board is telling this committee and what the CEO is telling us. The board in every organization is supported by the executive body in the organization. Mr. Myrie and Mr. Thompson are poles apart in terms of the process. Mr. Pierce, you can't run an organization like that. You're going to have chaos, and, and we see what we are seeing here today. The board is operating in a, in a, in a silo of its own, and Mr. Thompson and his team, which covers the ground all over the place, and then is at the beck and call of the board that will take its decision, because they have to approve. Note he said, they approve, they recommend. So ultimately, it's not Mr. Thompson's decision. It is what the board decides. And they, the board don't only approve. That is what struck me. They select. They go through the list. They go through they the list. Select. And also, as Mr. Mary says, they're not on the ground. So the selection, look, I think that, I think the PS has uh, members, the Permanent Secretary has given us some assurances, and uh, with regard to that, what? One final question. No, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm drawing a halt to it. So, no, you know, you know, I would never victimize my colleague, Mr. Jackson. Remember, Jackson, you see how I'm defending you. You feel it's, it's been a long time. I'm, I'm buckling to your pressure. <laughs> All right, members. Uh, so you will, uh, what, what I'm going to suggest is following what they say that, so Mr. Thompson, I think that if, I think that we should indicate that the recommendations go to the various members of parliament, there needs to be some tidying up. I must tell you that for those of us who are members of parliament and political representatives, we know the fine line of boundaries, but I do know that from time to time, all agencies, sometimes mistake, you know, I will talk about, I go to NWA and talk about a road and they will think it, oh, they thought it was in Central R because they're not as finely attuned to the political borders. But that is why all these things need to be clarified and tidied up. And the consultation would do just that. So, Mr. Mr. Chairman, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to just ask, Mr. if you can, ask the, the administration to go through a consultation with the members of parliament who are in touch with their parish officers and we'll do it and, and send us a list by next week Tuesday 
and we can determine if at that point in time by round robin and consultation with our colleagues because we really are a representation of our colleagues in the house if we are able to resolve the problem let's resolve it if there are still outstanding issues we may have to convene on it if i don't to Go get ahead. some clarification because the board there is the guidelines that governs the board and i would believe it's not just the board that takes it upon themselves to make final recommendation I would um, decisions and even recommendation too because no, yes. they are making recommendations. No, they make so we would really like to know the terms of reference that the, the board use to, to, to come to these decisions. All right, let us, know, Chairman. All right, I'm, I'm trying to, uh, all right, a little latitude. Thank you, Chairman. I, I am really happy to hear the PS really speaking about a consultation that is critical as representatives on the ground. And I'm happy for that, Ms. Uh, P.S. Derman Spence, shows your understanding of the whole situation. I really commend you for that. But I want to find out, would I ask the P.S., um, there are some situations where some roads are repaired repeatedly while others are left out. How do you rationalize that? Um, no, hold on. Remember, I, 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 I don't want to to Rio because there is, I think you're going into a, a whole new area, all right? And I'm, 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 I'm guided. Um, do, members, do you want me to proceed? I'd want to move on to the next subject. All right. But no. PSA, um, we'll sort it out. I take your guidance. Okay. All right, all right, Member Stewart, yeah. I think the question, Member Stewart, if I get it correct, repeat, repeat the question. Let us. I was just asking the yes. To uh, yes, there are some situations where some roads are repaired repeatedly while others have not been considered. How do you justify that? Uh, member, it should really be where uh, there's significant deterioration of a road that has been repaired, like maintenance can be executed. But it should really be like if a portion of the road um, in a farming community by way of kilometers was completed, and then there's uh, more road, the, 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 the rest of that road that needs to be fixed, that's the only situation that you should have. You shouldn't have one road being uh, fixed over and over and over. So that is a process that has to be looked at. It shouldn't be. I just, I'm not going to breach where you're going, Chairman. Just crave the indulgence of the presence of both the PS and RADA. Um, in the discussions, um, it was mentioned about seedlings and so forth, potato seedlings and all those things which are supplied to farmers. I don't need the answers now. I just want you to provide PS and RADA. One, how are those seeds procured? Is it through a licensed arrangement? How does RADA make those purchases which are made available to the farmers? Seeds, seedlings and fertilizers and so on. If you just provide the narrative, it's fine. I don't, don't want to detain the committee. All right, so you take it as a, a written a written, Yes, a, a written, written, response. written response. Simple. You want to respond or you want it to write? It's tender. All of the seedlings which are purchased and fertilizers. Yes. Yeah. All right, Mike. Oh, I'm saying right. this, yes. it, it's tender. Open tender for the seeds and the, with the fertilizers unless it's a gift. Otherwise, it's tender too. Okay, thanks. Yes, in, in closing this, just one question. If, for example, a road that has been repaired recently, the work is not adequate and it is the road deteriorates immediately, what is the recourse? What does one do? Well, the, fa the farm work program is both maintenance and, and repairs. So that information should go back into RADA so the engineers can take a look at it to see if there are liabilities that would hold the, 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 uh, the contractor accountable for doing that work. If that's not the case, then in consultation again, that we should be determined whether or not that road would need further attention because it's both maintenance and repairs. 
I remember the coming here and right. the committee emphasized that the matter of maintenance need to be looked at and we need to create some space in the budget to ensure that there's some maintenance Absolutely. Uh, happening and we are, look, we are doing that. All right. Um, also, just to add that um, we have what is called the contractor's retention. So in, if the road deteriorates to any extent, then that money that we withheld is used to fix All within right. the period. So my, uh, it's your champion at the bit. Yeah, just that, um, Mr. Thompson, just touch on it. If, if there are excessive right. deterioration within a certain time of completion, the contract is liable. All right. So what I'm, what, in conclusion, what we're asking is that over this, this week and, the, and, and next week, Monday, that you finalize the consultation. And this consultation is just not, not just the members of parliament, but with the rather parish officer, technical, everybody. Because I'm, I'm certain we can all come to a, a, a decision as to what are the priorities once we're on the ground. And, and yes, you have indicated you'll take a personal view and we'll ask the, 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 certainly the administration to, to, to continue with the consultation so that we can finalize. And we can tell our colleagues to make contact. And even the list we have, let's, let's assist by changing the nomenclature on the um, where boundaries are, or where, where the roads are, the, the locations, and so that we can get a proper master list and we can tidy up where we're going. Because, Mr. 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 PS, what what we would really all like to see is a situation where you know you have three or four or five roads, six roads that are priority. You line them out in order priority. You know, if there's some money this year, next year, the following year, you have an idea of what's going. So you can talk to people and explain what's going on. It can't be that you're talking and negotiating and doing all of this and then roads just popping out all over the place and no one. So let's move on, members, to the next. I, I, I'm I mentioned, I mentioned I mentioned to the PS last week, just in passing, because there was a concern from Zamari, from some of the contractors. Uh, we had the discussion inside here um, the last time we had this discussion on farm roads, because you have here where the estimated value for the end up, well, you have here where a nine million or a six million is put on a road but to properly put in the proper drainage and thing, it would cost more. So the asking them to sign a guarantee of the, 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 the lifespan of the road, the warranty on the road, because there is not enough money to put in proper draining in, in some instances that there is an issue of, of widening the, 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 the pool of the amount of contractors that you would get because some of them are not willing to sign that when they know that it will take more to actually give them, um, give you the road that will last much longer. So it's something for you to consider in, in one year design and two year scoping and, and the amount of monies you put on the road. Thank you. Okay, members, we're going to move now to the issue. What, what I, I had, I had understood it to be Holland lands, and I, I, it is 12.47, so I'm, 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 I think we need to be as quick as possible, but I recognize now that it's a wider um, issue of the SCJ, the All Island Cane Farmers Association, is that correct? And the relationship, but Yes. Yes, I, I, I recognize. I think it's and sugar lands. No, I, and, uh, yes, they're yeah, asking to use the microphone. Well, okay. <laughs> um, um, look, I. There, there's a, a wider. What I would ask you to do is, members, and, and given the time constraint, I would ask you 
if maybe yourself or, or the secretary of the sugar, of the Cane Farmers Association, somebody could just give us a, a brief overview of that because I, I don't necessarily feel that we need to detain ourselves overly with that element of it. What I would like, I think, is to just get a clear understanding, just to tidy up what has happened with Holland producers. So it, it, I would ask, just give us an overview, just that we have an understanding, if members want some clarification, but we can move on. I, I, I'm right. not really detained by it myself. Right. Just, just to be clear, Mr. Chairman, you're asking for the relationship between well, all cane and SCJH in respect of lands of Holland. No, in we're respect going to of come lands. to that. We're going to come okay, okay, afterwards. Okay. I'm just right. saying so, the so maybe thing so first. maybe where we could start then is asking the SCJ to indicate what leases or what arrangements it may have with um, all cane and how those um, came about. That would be a good place to start. Sure. All right, Mr. Shakir. Mr. Chairman, um, let me start by saying that SCJ inherited a lease um, to All Island came in St. Thomas from Fred M. Jones Estates Limited, two parcels of land totaling 159 acres. So that is the first um, such arrangement that we had with, that we now have with, this, with All Island came. The board has approved subsequently an arrangement for a lease whereby all island cane would have access to 3,600 acres of land, part of Long Pond in Trelawney. Now, the purpose of this lease is to accommodate small farmers and other persons displaced by the closure of the Long Pond and Hamden Sugar Estates. Um, the lease has not yet been executed, but all island cane has been given possession of the property pending lease, partly to prevent and to bring a halt to massive squatting that is taking place at Long Pond, and partly to determine viability and allocation of the proposed lands. The information that has been given to us by All Island Cane is that they will accommodate approximately 100 farmers initially all sums collected by all cane during this possession period prior to lease will be collected by all cane as a post office on behalf of SCJ and will be transmitted in gross to SCJ. At that point, the board can make a determination. This is which one? This, this is Long Pond. Okay. This is Long Pond in Trelawney, which so, is three so, and, so the, 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 the These relationships with... Um, these relationships with Trelawney and to some extent St. Thomas, you're saying that all Ireland is acting almost as your agent. Well, what I'm saying, sir, is we inherited a situation at PGR in eastern St. Thomas, which is planted yes. garden, which is the 159 acres in two parcels. Since that time, we have started to form a, an alliance with all Ireland K and one. They know the sugar farmers. industry and the farmers previously involved in the sugar industry and secondly because they have begun to transition out of sugarcane into agriculture generally um, so yes we have started to work on a relationship between SCJ and All Island Cane in fact the board has recently approved a memorandum of understanding between All, I All Island Cane and SCJ um, which would concretize the arrangements for the wor working relationship between the two entities. But as regards the Long Pond lands, there were a number of farmers and other persons displaced and badly hurt by the closure of the two mm -hmm, factories mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the contraction of, of the sugar industry in Trelawney. So we thought it was a good idea when we were approached by All Island Cane to make a substantial or a significant acreage available to All Island Cane to enable All, All Island Cane to accommodate initially 100 fa small farmers 
and expanding their operation as and when required. Now, that is the current agreement and relationship between the two entities at Long Pond. We are now considering a second such arrangement, which is at PJR in St. Thomas, where 400 acres of land has been set aside by the board of SCJ at the request of MICAF to accommodate, again, persons displaced by the closure of the Duck and Field Sugar Factory. But in addition to those several persons displaced by the, sugar fa by the closure of Duck and Field are a number of small fa farmers that are presently on the lands. So the mandate to all island cane is yes, accommodate your sugar people, but also take care of those persons, those small individual farmers who are presently on the land. No firm arrangements are in place and All Island Cane has not yet taken possession of those lands. That in sum total, Chairman, is the relationship between the two entities. Okay, yeah, Mr. you have anything to add <coughs> to that? Or? Yes, yeah. Okay. Members? Sure. Just on the list here that was given for, for Trelawney, is Trelawney Pride? Yes, it's, it's the same project. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, man, no, 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 no problem. No, I understand. Um, where you have um, the list here is for in the lease amounts, there's zero at some meaning that there is no cost to them. It's in your, no, no, it's in, in what has been provided. Yeah, yeah. Mike, Mike, Mike. I'm sorry. Okay. We're going through a process of interview and assessment and onboarding of the farmers. So where there's zero, those farmers have not yet been interviewed. They have expressed an interest, but they have not come in for interviews as yet. This list is, is updated further, uh, so there's a okay. later stage to this mm. since this was... Um, okay, well, because you need to look back at it then because I right. see here where application has been processed, yes, but still zero. I, I just look yeah. at it and we'll just check. The ones that have paid are the ones that we have actually pulled up, yes. All right. Members. Thank you very kindly, Chairman. Mr. Shak Shakir, is there a documented approved policy for persons seeking to lease government lands? The, 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 the SCJ is guided by the government's land divestment policy, as are all other public entities. So, just follow, could you just tell us what that is? How do you operate? Because Basically many of us who have seen, and, and, and it may suit us because of where we're going Absolutely. to so with Holland. What, how do you operate? So, so the practice is that applications or proposals are submitted by various individuals and entities. Typically, they are required to submit a business proposal or a business plan. This is assessed firstly by the management, then by the Land Divestment and Monitoring Committee. Now, SDJ has its own Land Divestment and Monitoring Committee. Who sits on that committee? That is a committee of the full board. It's a committee of the full board, but it also has a representative of the Integrity Commission as a member. Okay, so, but, but just for our understanding, how many members do you have on the board? On the board, we have, off the top of my head, I would say about seven or eight members. Seven, seven eight, that's not a lot. You, it's not a If you meet board. with them regularly, you should know them all by heart. Well, it's a relatively new board, so we just added three what? members. We just added, th the, the, the minister just added three new members. When? There uh, would have been last month, I think. Uh, actually, I think it's the first of July. The three new members are Mr. Michael Price, from MICAF, 
Mr. George Callahan from the SIA, and Mr. Hugh Gentles, a farmer from Manchester. But, but who is the chairman? Who is the Dr. Trelawney. Who is the chairman of the board? The chairman is the Honorable Danville Walker. Oh, Danville Walker Danville is the chairman. chairman. Uh, no, he's now full chairman, confirmed chairman. Okay. All right. So. The other members so, of no, the board? Yeah, but we were going through. Yeah, you wanted to say the. So, so, so let me try. I try mentioned the three yes. that were recently appointed. Other members include. Uh, I'm coming, sir. Um, I'm looking around the room. Dr. Charu, a cane farmer and a medical practitioner. Mr. John Plummer, a cane farmer. Um, well, Gary Colton was a member of the board. He's no longer a member of the board. Um, myself, ex officio. Mm -hmm. All right, we, we can get that information. Yeah, I can. Right and one more person, Dave Hilton, who is a quantity surveyor. Who? Dave Hilton. All right. You were, you were carrying us through the procedure. So. <coughs> Member sits on all these meetings? No, he sits, sit, sits on all meetings of the Land Divestment and Monitoring Committee. And that has been in place since? That has been in place from time, from the beginning of SCJ, as far as I'm aware. Okay. Yes. yes. So, cash through the procedure. Sure. So, an individual or entity applies for a specific parcel of land. He says, typically, this is what I want: ten acres situated in um, yeah. Bernard Lodge, St. Catherine. I want to grow red peas. Uh, I will invest X dollars in the project. I'll get the X dollars from this bank. I will employ 10 people, I, and my market will be Megamart, for example. Um, that proposal is assessed by the management, by, by what we call an internal review committee, and it then goes to the land divestment committee, which make, makes recommendations to the full board. And that is the process. I, know, I can verify <coughs> I will yes. Th Thank you, Ben. All right. So, all right. So, hold on. You go through the process of of that. Yes. Now, once a decision is then taken by the board, a final decision is taken by the board invariably, and I can't think of any exception on the recommendation of the committee, of the land divestment committee. The land, the internal. The, no, the board committee. So the right, the board committee. No, 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 no. Yeah, but, okay. but, but, right. So now the board, because of committee of the whole board, of the whole board. Part. So you, you now agree that you are going to take 4,200 acres. For example. For example. Mm -hmm. And you're going to move on that. What do you then do? You mean after approval? Yeah. After By approval. The board. After approval, a letter is sent to the applicant which says, typically, you are application for X was approved by the board on such and such a date, a draft lease will follow. So so <coughs> the question is, Sorry? you have the authority <coughs> to move on matters of that magnitude without sending it to cabinet or to the, the ministry. In other words, you're autonomous or you, we are autonomous. you work under certain guidelines? We are autonomous to the extent that all public entities are autonomous, where the sum of money involved does not exceed $60 million, which I believe is the current threshold. P.S., you can correct me if I'm wrong. So typically, leases don't go to the cabinet. What goes to the cabinet are sales. Typically, it's sales in so, excess of so $60 million. So something of this magnitude. L like, you mean, for example, I'm, Holland? I'm moving to Holland now because no. I'm going to go through. It wouldn't typically go to the cabinet. So you would just determine? The board would just determine. Yes, ab absolutely. Yes. I'm, I'm embodying you in the board. Yes. All right. So you would determine that it, it is, is going to be done. It, it, and is, it, is, it, is a, it is management considers. It makes a recommendation to the, firstly, to the committee. The committee then considers management's recommendations and agrees to either recommend or decline to recommend a proposal to the board. All right, you then do what? 
we then write to the applicant, advise of the yes, approval. Yes, but no, you go. You, you obviously would go to your ministry. You don't. You don't notify the ministry. No, not of a lease. Not typically. Not on a individual case by case basis. No, I'm just saying something <laughs> of the magnitude. I'm talking a Holland estate yes. where you have 4,200 acres of well, government land. Can I just clarify, sure. Chairman? Sure. While Holland estate is 4,002 acres, 4,200, hold on. While Holland estate is 4,200, the, the area leased the area that is subject to the present discussion is 2,400. Right. So it's about I, half. I, yeah. So, but I, I, but again, I make the point. No, I understand. You would, you, you, within the governance framework, you have the autonomy to yes, just to approve such leases. To do, and that's what you did in this occasion. In most occasions, nearly all occasions, where we didn't in, actually in go to lease in this occasion. Okay. Remember, there was no lease in this occasion. Yeah, but all right. So, because my understanding, there's land. Somebody wants to own the land. If at some point you're saying, look, we as a board are, are, are willing to move on, go and take possession of this land while we're working on details, you don't inform the ministry? No, not typically. In, in particular cases, as in the case of Holland, the ministry was aware. Yes, I, I understand. But I'm, I'm trying to get the procedure no, though. No, there is no procedure in place for the ministry to approve or ratify decisions of the Board and Land Divestment Committee regarding the, the lease of sugar lands in SCJ's possession. All right, so that, that for me would be recommendation mm -hmm. number one moving forward, but, but I mm -hmm. don't want to preempt it. Mm -hmm. Just some comments because I think it may be useful for us to go through the report. Uh, Member Jackson, Member Stewart. Well, yeah, or vice versa. Regarding your leasing and sale procedures, if you, someone owes a lease, a valid lease, and is paying their lease, um, amounts and they are farming on the land which would be one of the conditions of the lease of the lease you normally go into transaction to sell that land that you're currently have a valid lease with to somebody else so where you're going member is to Bernard Lodge why, why you think <laughs> I'm going I'm going everywhere that SCJ uh, property so hear me now I'm going to I'm going to Westmoreland too. It is absolutely possible that lands that are leased can be considered for sale. Well, well Otherwise, I have a valid than lease. to the farmer. Well, a valid lease, if there is a lease that cannot be terminated, that's entirely different. But where leases and SCJ leases and the commissioner before SCJ typically has what we call break clauses. Break break clauses. Break clauses. For example, the commissioner's lease. Typically says, typically says I can give you six months notice, either party, and terminate the lease. Mm. And what are usually the considerations for those exercise, exercising those options? That there is a proposal regarding the land, which one is viable, two will provide a sub substantial employment, three fulfills some public purpose. Public purpose. National purpose. Mr. Chairman, I have particular interest in that. Because yes, you you anticipate where it's going, Bernard Lodge. You have a number of small farmers, or had. Still have plenty, sir. You have some, and some is in the past. No, sir. I still no, have you. Well, in respect to your breaking the lease, term exercising the similar six month notice to terminate the lease. You terminate the lease to facilitate another investor. I'm able to do that. You're able to do that. For several reasons. For Not only by the break clause. As in the case of Bernard Lodge, there was substantial breach by nearly all of the farmers. Non-payment of rent, non-payment of taxes. The commissioner's lease rates are small, relatively. So there's also a requirement for the payment of property taxes. 
What? Plus, Sorry. there's Go also ahead. a requirement that you not sublet or part with possession of the property without written consent. Yes, on the latter point, you yes, you yes. um, subletting without proper um, consent. I am aware that there were a number of farmers in Bernard Lodge who were subletting, but they were farming. And they very well have been subletting because that's an opportunity that come and they are the parent, the principal, no, leasee. Why wouldn't mm -hmm. those farmers, since they are fulfilling the primary, one of the main objectives, as I understand it, of all government Absolutely, policy is, is production, is to have the lands being engaged in production. Uh, why, road, yeah, yeah, why weren't those farmers allowed to do so allowed to regularize with you pay whatever is to be paid and be able to continue given that they, they were actively engaged in farming on the land so there is no objection to a farmer subletting to other farmers the only requirement is that you seek consent to do so no in the absence of that yeah. because it will be, be functional mm -hmm. Mr. Shukir. so there are sublessies. Yeah, yeah. There are sublessies occupying lease land. That is the case before yeah. us. Um, can I say that I can't think of any such case that we have not tried to regularize? There's none that you can. None that I can recall. We have tried to accommodate all persons on, on the, the same location or elsewhere. No, maybe elsewhere. Well, for, oh. So, for example, if the location is the subject of a lease of a sale, for example, approved by the cabinet then the relocation, then the, the regularization would have to be elsewhere. But we still try to provide the same, the same area of land as good a quality as possible. With infrastructure? With infrastructure? infrastructure being water? Road? And, and road access, yes. I, I, I looked on the radar list and I was searching to see if there was any in Bernard Lodge. I never saw any. There, there isn't a lot of radar activities in Bernard Lodge. There's not a lot, but there's some. Mr. Prendergast can tell you. I have some over there, the group of Bernard Lodge small farmers. There are several groups. I yes, he did the road for part of them and he hasn't completed the rest yet. Okay. He said apparently the board never approved that remaining section. Not the board of SCJ. No, the no, rather. Yes. <laughs> well, that's what Mr. Prendergast yeah. told me, that yeah. he couldn't complete the road. In, and those were all small farmers. Maybe he'll fix the road now, remember? It's in the list now, Mr. <laughs> Prendergast. Oh, hooray. That's yes. No, I do, no tell, Max, Mr. Prendergast, I have to go to hell. Yes, your life on I tell you, say you're going on a slippery. No, not slippery. On one hand, it is okay. And on the other hand, it is not Mr. Prendigas is an operational I officer. From you. Mr. Prendigas, Mr. Land. Prendigas is an be operational manager. He recommend down. based on what he be saw. Careful of this slippery slope. That Mr. You're Prendigas, going didn't right, you members, go there members, and see the farm please. road? All right, members, and see the farmers. Member Jackson, I, 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 let's not get so parochial. Yeah. Yes, not get Colleague, Mr. Chairman, that's why Absolutely. be careful of the slippery slope you're going down. All right, members, members, I want to, can I, no, members, your indulgence, one second. We have before us, we were actually going through today's discussion has to do with Holland producers. And um, I think it's important, we have received a report and I think it's important quickly if I can just highlight some elements of this that have been prepared. This this report is prepared by you, Mr. Sugar. This report is uh, SCJ. I, I'm not sure what report you have. There's a report, have. Holland Estate and the arrangement with Holland Producers Limited. It's, 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 it, it's, All right. I think it's by Members, report. just if I may quickly, it says here the property um, 4,200 acres, um, it was a lease between Jerry and Navy and the Commission of Lands. <coughs> Towards the end of 2018, members can follow on this, and early 2019, Ray Nevio lease was surrendered, upon which the Commission of Land tra transferred the entire property, all 4,200 acres, to SCJ Holdings Limited, consistent with Cabinet Decision 3507 which broadly vested all sugar lands, former sugar 
lands in SCJ Holdings Limited. SCJ Holdings was notified of the imminent return of Holland by the Ministry of Industry and Commerce, Agriculture and Fisheries, by a letter dated March 21st, 2019, which also requested that the property be immediately transferred to Agroinvest to manage same as an agroeconomic zone. So that, that was a, that's what the ministry had initially asked you. That was from the ministry. Who, si who signed that on behalf of the ministry? It was signed by Minister Hutchinson. This initial? Yes, sir. Right. To, for it to be transferred to Agroinvest to manage. And this would be in March 21st. By letter dated April 2nd, addressed to um, Minister Hutchinson, you offered no objection to the transfer of the land to the Agri-Invest, opining, however, that a transfer of ownership would require a cabinet decision. Hence the discussion that I had with you earlier, as the lands had been invested, had been vested in SCJ by such a decision. The matter of the transfer was never pursued. By letter dated April the 30th, which is a month and a half later, under the signature of Minister Hutchinson, SCJ was introduced to an entity with the name Holland Estate Management Company, advising Italia that Hemco, the management company, was prepared to undertake the management of the property for one year, commencing June 1st, 2019, and would thereafter be prepared to enter into an extended lease arrangement with SCJ. The letter also advised of the challenges facing the land, um, high cost of electricity to pump the water, continuous invasion of cattle, implying that these necessitated the need for management of the property. The letter went on to explain that Hemco had already interviewed some 245 farmers. So this would have been, and this was in the same April who had interest in occupying the entire 2,400 acres. The letter went on to state that it was important that the participants who had sel been selected by the company start occupying the land immediately upon the relinquishing of Appleton's lease and that Hemco would be submitting a formal application of the lands. It should be appreciated that having no other lands in St. Elizabeth and Holland having been in continuous occupation of Rea Nebio, SCJ had absolutely no presence in that area, had no knowledge of the condition of Holland property and very little information of the same. Further, SCJ did not have the necessary resources, financial and human, to manage the property. As shown by the correspondence, it was always understood that Holland would not remain with SCJ but would on the return of the same to GOJ, pass the land to an entity nominated by the Ministry of Industry, Commerce, SC, and the Ministry of Industry, Commerce, and Agriculture and Fishery. SCJ therefore relied on the assessment of the property and the advice received from Minister Hutchinson, who was Member of Parliament for the area. In the circumstances, by letter dated May 2nd, 2019, SCJ advised Minister Hutchinson that SCJ was prepared to facilitate Holland Estate Management Company taking early possession of the Holland lands pending the finalization of the final lease arrangements. SCJ, however, asked that Hemco CEO be asked to make contact with SCJ's managing director. That would be you. It appeared that the name Holland Estate Management Company was abandoned and that the entity was incorporated as a private limited company with the name Holland Producers Limited. Accordingly, by letter dated May 16, 2019, HPL wrote to SCJ advising that it was prepared to manage the 2,400 acres for one year and thereafter to enter into an extended lease arrangement with SCJ. This letter was followed by a meeting on May 16, 2019 with SCJ, which meeting was attended by Mrs. Lola Marshalls William and Mr. Kenneth Daly on behalf of HPL. For the avoidance of doubt, it needs to be expressly stated that SCJ had absolutely no knowledge of any connection 
between Mrs. Marshall Williams might have had with any government of Jamaica official. At no time did SCJ agree to a one-year due diligence period with HPL, and so by letter to HPL dated July 9th, 2019, SCJ advised that it was preparing a draft lease agreement to be signed by HPL, and then went on to state that, in the meantime, at the request of Minister J.C. Hutchinson, you have our full consent to immediate possession of the said premises to commence your operations. You then go through a section that says that the practice of giving these putative leases, possession of lands prior is not a novel one and has been used in cases where lands are threatened by squatting or marauding cattle. Marauding cattle, great terminology or are otherwise challenged and also for, to facilitate a period of due diligence. A case in point is Long Pond Turloni, which we discussed, and the, the, the oil Island and cane farmers. This practice should not result in any loss to SCG as typical lease when signed will commence as of the date of possession with rent becoming due as of that date. Where the lease is not signed, SCG will have a claim against the occupant for Mr. Profits, that is compensation for occupation and use of lands during the possession period. So th the first question at the end of this will be whether they owe compensation at this point. Despite the foregoing, HPL has repaid in, re remained in occupation of the land for over one year from July 9, 2019, the possession date which period expired on July 8, 2020. Accordingly, SCJ wrote to HPL by letter dated July 9, 2020, advising of the expiry of one year and inquiring whether it wished to enter into a lease agreement and in that event requesting a business plan to enable a proper assessment of the proposal. It is at this time that SCJ will need to consider its remedies against HPL. Suffice to say that SCJ has had no written response to this letter dated July 9, 2020. SCJ, however, received by email on July 16th of this year a summary of the income and expenditure for the one-year period. And the summary shows lease income of $6.46 million, expenditure of $6.243 million, accounts receivable of 7.18 million and accounts payable of 6.632 million. So again, I suspect the second question will be accounts payable to who? In closing, you add, it should also be noted that HPL, Holland Producers Limited, had applied for a lease of a limestone quarry being part of the Holland Estate. This application was approved by the SCJ Board on December 4th, 2019. This matter was, however, never pursued by HPL. Uh, that is the report that we have. Is that a clear? Yes. Uh, so yes. so there, are, there, are, there are a couple questions. The first would have to do with uh, what compensation would be outstanding or, or how you would arrive at that for the, the, the occupation of one year of this land so. at, of 2,400 acres. Okay. The second question that... Um, the second that The second question would be the payments. The, 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 there's a total income here of six and seven... 13.64. Huh? About 13.64, 13.64 million, and it says expenditure and accounts payable. That is total to potential income, because, because if you look at 7.18 is accounts receivable, yes. which, which means it's unpaid. Yeah. Unpaid yeah, rent. Yeah, but I'm just saying that yeah. this, is, this, is, <laughs> yeah. this was sent to you. I, you know, it I'm, was, I'm, It's just some clarity that we're looking at. And the third is a point which members were going to have a discussion. So you're saying that the board 
is also without any cabinet, any ministry able to say, well, see a quarrel is here. The board can. Go with God. The board can. Yeah, well. That has always been the practice. Yeah. From, yeah, from well, CJ began well, in no, 2001. I'm, yeah, you know, our job is not, I our job is to look at procedures and systems. Agreed. And where we see weaknesses. Highlight them. There you go. All right, so you want to just kind of give us an idea of those, of your, those your comments on those three oh, points, right. and I open it up to PS as well. No, I, one would not see it as a weakness if one exercises them. Um, no, 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 no. Remember, the, 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 we're not saying w where you have technical persons, they make the recommendations. But there has to be a situation where the responsibility lies somewhere. The buck stops with someone. Yes, Mr. And Chairman. There and, the buck, lies and, the, point. and the buck in this case stop with SCJ. They have the responsibility as an agency to use their discretion and they are given a, a, a maximum and a minimum which they can play in between, which they have been doing fairly well. So for you now to be saying or to be asking, let me put it that way, if, if, if you see it as, 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 as a weakness. I mean, soon and very soon you're going to ask Parliament to do everything so we have to get rid of the agencies. Do you want to ask what? No, no, no. no I'm never saying you, 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 not no, me. No, no, I've never so indicated. So therefore, no, Clark, I've never indicated. You may not have. You may not no, have. Sorry. I, no, sorry. No, I'm Parliament. I'm saying ministerial and cabinet oversight is a standard mainstay and they are given guidelines they are given guidelines mr chairman and before i heard the gentleman made mention of a 60 million dollar cap that is to sell that. fine so in everything that they are doing there is a ceiling that they can go to and they yeah. have to use and their I'm, discretion and, and, and member clark i don't think that we have to believe i don't think we are on opposite sides uh, what i did ask well, in the committee. <laughs> that, therein lies the issue. Um, what, what I'm saying, though, our job, and, and uh, what I did was to invite Mr. Shukir to give us his insight, because at the end of the day, it is our recommendations on how we strengthen these procedures, because, quite frankly, there are some real issues when you look at all these, what has happened. But so in, this, in the same instant, Mr. Chairman, whilst we have that privilege to recommend and to do things, we still cannot take away too much of their powers yeah, that absolutely. they are vested with. Member, member Clark, we won't, you won't get any disagreement. It and is the it's a debate that we must have. No, I would not reach that far. So. Uh, <laughs> he enjoys a little spirited debate. All right. Um, um, just just a, a few things. So, you absolutely. Go. One or two subsequent events that I would like, if you will allow me to oh, report. Oh, absolutely. So, we received, we received some directives from the Prime Minister. Oh, good. One of those directives was that all non-farm commercial operations should cease at Holland. That has that instruction has. So there been, were non-farm. There was the reported case. There was a, the reported case of a farm store. Reported meaning. The, it was in the press and in the media that there was the, a farm store yeah. on the property. But when you say reported, you never went and looked. Well, I know, I know that the there was. I hear the chairman ask for audits. I'm trying, did, no, have I, you gotten anything I, back? I now know that there was an operation on the property. Okay, yes. all right. So but it's it not just reported. reported. It's, yes, okay. It was reported and confirmed. And confirmed. All right, good. good. <laughs> just okay, and confirmed. All right. So that directive was given, and to the best of my inform knowledge, information, and belief has been adhered to. Secondly, that the land be passed immediately to the Agro Investment Corporation. That has also been done. 
now we are to assess. You know, up to you, over to you, Chairman. Those are the subsequent events. Okay, so it has now been transferred. Loosely transferred. Possession yes. has been given. And that will, when it does for finalize that, that will become part of a cabinet decision. Yes, it, will. it will if it involves the legal transfer of the property. All right. Yes, Good. All right. In the case of that, what you just said, Mr. Shakir, where the lands that was handed over because you said there was no lease with Alan producers, you just gave it to them to use for a year? No, we agreed. So there was an agreement? There was an agreement. A written agreement? No, it was not a written agreement. Verbal agreement. They were given possession pending finalization of a lease arrangement. So, but how, how was that done? How, the, how, the, how was that like transacted? Like a handshake? You simply, <laughs> well, they are, you, have, you have to appreciate the challenges that are existing yes. on the ground. You have no institutional knowledge at all about this property. Mm. Correct? You have no means, no resources, human or financial, to manage the property. You have no presence in the region. The, the best way of dealing with such a situation is to put in immediately a manager, one with knowledge of the community, representing the, representative of the common interests, one to secure the property. Mr. Mr. Shakir, I differ with you. Um, please, I crave your indulgence, Chair. Mr. Shakir, you have a parcel of 2,400 acres of land that is under your legal possession. If I go on it and begin to conduct activities, you can evict me. You can have me removed. I have no authorized um, instructions, permission to be there. You are going to go into an arrangement with an entity called Alan Producers where you are going to make them legally um, permitted to be on the premises. The question that was coming from the chair, what instrument did you use for that permission? A, ver a handshake? A verbal conveyance no, of authorization? There was a written communication between... Eh? Yes, there was a written communication between oh. myself and Holland Producers. Oh, okay. Oh, That's was an agreement. Yes, a written agreement. Uh, was in that sense, but not a formal agreement. No, like a this agreement hereby. Yeah. No. It doesn't. A, a, no, I'm following. There, 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 there was an, an agreement to possess yes. the property, and there was, no, but there was no um, formal lease, or lease agreement. agreement on it. And in that letter agreement, there was a no charge for one year. There was a no. The, no, at no point was there an agreed no charge period. So the well, letter well, of no, agreement. Member, member Jackson, let, 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 let there, was, go, there was go, no go. agreed no charge period. What was agreed was early possession. What that implies is that the lease, when commence, would commence as of the possession date. There okay. Was, there was so never be, a moratorium. So the commencement date would be retracted? Absolutely. Was that stated in the in the written agreement? But it, it, if you if you if you take possession pending a formal lease agreement. No 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 no. Just for clarity. Oh, absolutely, it was understood that it the was, lease agreement would. Was set that out an implicit understanding or was that an explicit understanding? Member, if I put you in possession of my house yes. and say look after my house, and I, as soon as I get a lease agreement, I will I will have you sign it. Well, that lease agreement could commence after one year. But in this case, you say it would be retroactive. But it would commence as of the date of your possession. As of the date of possession. Absolutely. But my simple question, Mr. It's Shukir, was that point explicitly stated in the letter agreement? No, but it was clear to me. It was clear to you? Yes. And you assume it was clear to him too? Well, there was no agreement for no payment. No, no. The, per, the, per, the, the receiver of the letter... Yeah. You took it that they had the same understanding as you. Because I, I, I took it that they read English and understood the same, that I gave them possession, pending a the, formal lease agreement. And that the formal lease agreement will be retroactive to the possession date. I, I leave it to you, member. No, I'm, no, no, no. You told us, not just me, that you understood it. 
that the possession date would be retroactive. The, the lease commencement date would be retroactive to the possession date. Yes. You had that understanding, but you never knew but if the know. other party had that understanding. But member, member, we, remember we had a discussion before, you know. I had a meeting. Oh, so it was expressed uh, in the discussion. Man, I had a meeting with these people. Remember, I refused to agree to any moratorium. I refused even to agree to a one-year period. To now a what? So, sorry. To a one-year period. Okay. What I agreed in writing was early possession pending formal lease agreement. Okay, fine. Clear. Let me just move on from that point. No. <coughs> could I... No, just, related, related. I, no, no. One second. Can I just... For clarity and, and, and why this is important. You are now transferring possession and ownership to AgroInvest, which means that the Holland producers will no longer and will not sign a lease. Therefore, I think Member Jackson's point is made even more clear in that I don't suggest you are expecting any payment from Holland producers. What, what I'm suggesting with your permission, Chairman, is that there will be an assessment of the stewardship of Holland producers. It's trite law. If it's you what? Have, it is common law that if you have possession of property without payment of so rent... So you expect some remuneration no, for what them? what I said, I expected an assessment. No. Clearly the accounts, when verified, will have an implication on the outcome of those discussions. Because if it turns out, as has been indicated, which is that there is uncollectable receivables. No, I don't know the quality of the receivables. But if there are uncollected receivables of $7 million, now you and I and the members will understand that if this is owed by farmers, it's going to be held to collect it. Yeah, but they're on the property the still. Fa the farmers are on the property. And still. it is understood that with AgroInvest, they would also be seeking well, to regularize some of this. AgroInvest so, mandate so is to protect the farmers on the land, the small absolutely. farmers. Okay? Absolutely. But I'm saying to you, the quality of these receivables will have an implication. So you, and this is my final, so you in looking at this, if you are depending on these accounts, then you will also be looking at how these expenditures, well, I have what a good they sense account for. From the advice, from the inquiries I have made, that the accounts payable represent in that represent almost in its entirety outstanding security charges for securing the property. All right. No. No. I've, yeah. Are you? And I have a challenge with, 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 with that, Mr. Shakir. If you are to go into an agreement mm -hmm. with, with HPL, mm -hmm. yeah, what would your lease, what would it that you would look for in a, in a dollar figure to lease the property to them? No, Mike, Mike, Mike. I'll, I can give you a principle. Give me a principle. That there would be a, lay, a base rental. Yes, per acre. Per acre. Right. So that's, that would be your return. Yeah. So to like what you have, the agreement with, with, which, with All Island Cane, you rent them at what per acre? Well, the same arrangement. Exactly the same arrangement as I have with HPL. Possession, pending, lease. So, but I, I, I'm confused of why it would take you one year no, I agree to, with to, you. To, to, to prepare a lease. No, member, I agree with you that one year is, is too long. Yeah. And it so should have been done you earlier. have a figure in your head. Just use a figure to... For, that, least, that for you him? Have, for, yeah, for all Island. We have an understanding, Holland producers and ourselves, in right. I mean, no, all Island, all Island yes. case, which is a base rental in year one of $3,000 per acre. Help me calculate there, Chairman. So 3,000... That is... Hold on. Yeah. That is to all island no, Yeah, yeah. So just using their figure, 3,000 times 2,400... Assuming it's all usable. Yeah, man. Yeah. 2,400 acres is how much money that, Chair? 6 million. 
2,400 times 3,000? Yeah. 7 million. 68. Uh, 7 million? Yeah. All right. So 7 million dollars. Am I right? I, I don't know. I don't trust my... 2,400. All right. 7... So 7.2 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. million. All right. So 7.2 million dollars. Um, I'm just using a figure, mm -hmm. right? All right. All right. Let us use then that 1,800. Help me, Mr. Mary. 1,800 acres of the 2,004 is can usable. Be, is usable. Yeah? How much money that, Mr. It Mary? It gets even smaller. Yeah, that's fine. I hear what you're saying. 5.4. So that's 5.4 million dollars. So you hand over a piece of land to me, the tenant. Be that I want to, whatever I want to do with it, sublet it back, whatever. I have to pay you $5.4 million per year. Well, eh? what you're saying is a principle. You're outlining a principle, yeah. not numbers. So you don't matter how much farmers I can get on it or not. Eh? So same with, with all, uh, all Island, Cain. If they have the 3,000 odd acres out in Long Pond and they can't get farmers to rent out the full 3,000 odd, they still owe you money for the land that Ab is absolutely, usable. Absolutely. Right. So I find it a miss really that you're trying to defend the, 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 the Holland producers in how much it is that they have to, hold on, how much is it that they, you may not recover? Eh? Because they themselves rent land, and unless you can guarantee that they never collected for it, eh? and the expenses that they have to pay is on them. My problem, you know, is that they have taken possession of the lands, collected to no benefit of the taxpayers. So you are going to have to take money out of your coffers now to pay the land tax on this property. Will you? Uh, yeah? le, le, no, is that question asking you? Know? No, I, I obviously have to pay the taxes. You have to pay the taxes. Naturally, I am the and they owner. have, in what you have sent here, is that their leasing income is 6.46. No. They claim that their expenditures is 6.24. All of this is, right? is unverified. You know? the, ah, they have accounts receivable of another 7.18. Yeah. Hmm? Uh, so uh, the six, uh, the, the four, the nearly $15 million worth of income them would I get? And you have not charged them for, and they're not paying for the lease of the there farm no store. In there. For the farm store, so that's even free, and income earning from it. Right? I hear what you're and saying. It, so, you know, so there are two issues. One, you blundered for not putting in a lease within that one-year period. And two, is that now that they have even sent you some, they need to pay something to the taxpayers. So, so may, I, may I remember, let me start off by saying, I have to agree with you, that a lease should have been in place at an earlier date. No question. It puts a number of issues beyond dispute. We wouldn't be having this discussion if there was a document in place. What I say to you is an assessment has to be made between certainly AIC, HPL, and ourselves as what would be a reasonable cost for the occupation of the lands for the one year period. Now why I look to these numbers here, because this may end up telling you what is the financial position of HBL. Yeah, but it may be an insolvent company. Where you, where, where All Island Kane had a track record mm -hmm. to give them possession before even the contract. What track record did HPL have why you gave them possession before? Again, have to go back to the circumstances. I had no res we had no resources in St. Elizabeth to manage these lands. Ha Ray and Nevio Group had had these lands for years. Mm -hmm. SCJ had no information, knowledge, anything about these lands. The lands were suddenly landed back. It, sorry, so one point. It was always understood that SC, it would merely be a pass-through to, to, to MICAF, that particular property, because SCJ didn't have the institutional knowledge nor the resources to manage it. But you, but you took up an entity that had no track record at no, all. Was it because of the word of the minister but, himself? But clearly, the, 
the recommendation of the member of parliament is significant. Tell Rada that. <laughs> eh? Sorry? <laughs> no, I... No, but... but <coughs> uh, Mr. 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 Chairman. Yeah. And so, well, he, I yielded to him and the last answer you gave, the recommendation came from the MP for the area or the minister. No, no, no. Mr. 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 Shukir. Of course I am saying no to that. No, listen first, and I'll tell you why. He gave you he gave you he made that request to you, you said as as MP. What letter here did he write to you on that letter, that instruction on? As minister and signed it as minister. He did. But so oh no 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 no. Just for the records. He wrote you and gave you instructions as minister, not as member of parliament. So, so let us look back at his letter of instruction. The letter of instruction. The letter of instruction is not, not really an instruction. If you look at it carefully, what the minister said should happen immediately is not that HPL should be in place, is that the farmers should be allowed to take possession of the lands immediately. Through what? Through what? Through HPL. Oh, okay. Agreed. Yeah, exactly. So yes, Secondly. there was a recommendation, not only by a minister, with no, hands-on no. responsibility for agriculture, not portfolio. But he had a double role. He was the member. But, but Mr. Mr. Jackson. Mr. Shukir, when I was a minister, <laughs> I was also, when I was a minister in three four portfolios, and I was always a member of parliament. Yes. When I write as MP, I write on my member of parliament letterhead. When I write as minister, I write on the ministry's no, I, letterhead. I, I hear all of that, Mr. Jackson. It's not all of that. But listen because, to me. no, where the letter comes from determine the authority that it comes with. Sorry. To suggest otherwise... Mr. Sikshukir, my good friend, would be a bit disingenuous. It, it was obviously important that Minister Hutchinson had hands-on responsibility for agriculture, but he also had knowledge, direct knowledge of the ground. So, for example, sir, when I was approached early this year by Dr. Fenton Ferguson to go to All Island Cane to accommodate the small farmers on the land in eastern St. Thomas, it was, there was no difficulty for me to act on the representation and recommendation of the Member of Parliament. We do it all the time. He never had a role as minister to write to uh, as, mini, as minister. I agree. He only had authority but as I Member could, of Parliament. It was always open say, to me. No, but that doesn't, that doesn't erase right. the point. I, I but hear but the I point. go further, though. I go further. I go further. Mm -hmm. but, but it's my favorite. Yeah. Yes, he's just okay. So, 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 my question, my question, my question, my member Jackson. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Sh Mr. Shakir. Yes, sir. We heard earlier on when we dealt with Rado that the objective to be met by Alan producers taking possession of the land as you set out was to enable or to facilitate these group of small farmers it was more than that it was one to secure the land and prevent squatting and further degradation when 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 did campari advise the minister the ministry or scg mr pierce you are here when did the ministry become aware that campari would be would be giving up the lands. It's it's in the report. You were away in March. When did they get possession of it? When did when did the ministry became aware? Remember, I, I think the report spoke to it. The ministry. And the point I'm getting at for the benefit of time. Oh. For the benefit of time, the ministry. <laughs> <laughs> what, 
was aware that for months that Campari would be giving up the land. You have, you have in the ministry various agencies. Rada has a remit to organize farmers nationally. March 21, last year. And the letter correspondence from, from, uh, no, 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 from um, um, Alan uh, producers from okay. early May, right? What you said, though, Mr. Shukir, which struck me, is that no capacity existed to manage it. No, nowhere in the government that capacity exists. SCJ. Members. Right, members. Uh, Mr. Are, Mr. Chair, right, no, just, please, just, just want one. I, oh, I was wanted to add that um, I have a document here which indicate that the ministry wrote to Mr. Vivian Brown, mm -hmm. kindly referred to the attached letter <clears throat> and uh, J. Ray and Neville Limited's return of the Holland Estate lands to the government of Jamaica on June 30th, 2019. Um, and it goes further to say that... Um, yes, but that's after the land was sent to Lee. So that, that's, right. that may be it, the official, it, but your, it was your report here right. gives the, the dates as, right. as the end of 2018, early 2019. Members, it is uh, 10 minutes to 2. I'm, 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 I want to, to wrap up. I, I don't know if there are any... Just, I'm going to ask... Member Stuart, quickly. Yes. No, I will. All right, quick, yeah. <clears throat> would, you, would you allow me one final comment to the sure. member from but St. You, Catherine's? I, I will warn you of the can of worms. You I, may I know I do, sir. Know. So I would make a final comment that... Absolutely, that when go, go with God. ...that a letterhead does not stop a member of parliament from being a member of parliament. And the office from which <laughs> there comes the can of worms. I, and the office from which we write indicate the authority that we we reference. Members of Parliament are very forceful at times. Member. Member Stewart. Thank you, thank you, Chairman. Through you to Mr. Shakir. Yes, SCJ Holdings has a mandate to close out all aspects of divestment, particularly as it relates to former sugar workers and all estates. Is that correct? Well, how is this program going? A lot of that responsibility no, no. was passed to STJ Legacy. Yeah. Um, hold on. Members, you're going down. What I'd like is for us to, 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 we, we can't, no, let's, let's, stick, let's stay with what we, we, we have to deal with. I want to, to, to just, in because members is is one fifty. If we go we can go all day and that's unfair to the, the house and, and all in the house. C can I just in, in closing, uh the, you had indicated the limestone quarry. That's dead. That's dead and will not go through. No, it's not going through. Good. And secondly, Mr Mary, as chairman of the board it was reported that you had asked for an audit of what? I wasn't quite certain. Okay, re relating to benefits that uh, farmers on the Holland agriculture. What, what sort of benefits would you be talking about? Inputs like fertilizer, chemicals, seeds, etc. So you're saying that there may have been an approach to that, to those farmers, etc. It was reported, et so that I'm inquiring to find out what Have you exactly gotten any results of the report? No, I have not received the report. Of the, of the audit, audit yet. Uh, We're not, and, and we would. Not concluded. What, what would be good is if we could get, and I, because you're, you're, you're ensuring that. No impropriety. Okay. All right, so. Just, just. <laughs> 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 just to find out in terms of, uh, Mr. Shakir, just to find out in terms of compensation, uh, 
um, what is the procedure? What, you, what, what mechanism will be used now? To determine to, compensation? Yes. All right. So, for example, RADA is carrying out an audit. Agri the Agro Investment Corporation will be on the ground. We now have representatives, a team from the ministry is on the ground. An assessment will be made as to whether the property and the management of the property could take an element of lease income on top of it. It is clear that the costs of protecting and securing the property are overwhelming. Had there been a formal lease agreement, it would have been, it would have been very likely in these circumstances for the lessee to have defaulted midway because the costs of operations were substantial and may have made the whole enterprise non-viable. Non-viable. Just, just quickly, <laughs> approximately how much is the property tax for that property? <laughs> eh? It would be interesting to find out. <laughs> yes. And, um, well, a member um, asked a couple of questions. So would the member be satisfied if they paid the property taxes? At least. All right. I hear you, No, sir. no. I'm going to check it. At least. Yeah, because one, they had a building that was free of cost that they were earning from, and this is even more than what you were, you, you, I mean, you would have leased it to them at a peppercorn rate, and they would have. So, to facilitate the yeah, no, no, reasonable, and whatever infrastructure they have to put yeah. in and all of that. I, I understand that. Yeah? But on that... I hope it's not taking one year to do the lease agreement for All, All Island Cain. I'm sure they'll be moving with more alacrity. Yeah. It, given it's current not likely. Events. It's not likely. Not likely. Yeah, <laughs> just, just in case that it you know, takes that some time. Um, and, and, um, and members, this, uh, uh, members, I would just suggest, amongst ourselves, just as a question, for the clerk who has to discuss these things. My, my feeling is that the, we need to ensure that agencies that are moving along, that there is a formal methodology of reporting yes, not just to their parent ministries mouth. and that mm. the information, once the cabinet ministers are aware of what are going, are going on, it is reasonably, you can be reasonably assured that cabinet should be assured if it is not, if it is below the threshold fine, may not go as a formal, but it is important. So I think a, a, a recommendation must be made of some procedure, permanent sector, within your organization to ensure that all these leases, well, different yeah, yeah. things that are moving parts that are taking place, that both yourself as accountable officer and the cabinet minister are kept fully informed Especially so that when there's an issue no one can say well I didn't know right so that all the procedures so I, I, I leave it no more than right. permanent secretary putting the instructions in place mm. but as a wider recommendation to, to parliament um, if, if members agree yes no yeah. not sure especially when you're leasing that, that vast amount Things of that land. Form. I, I would agree with, with that. Right. Um, I think that the government is presently considering um, the whole methodology for land divestment by yes. SCJ and okay. other entities. I will yeah. ask them to ensure yeah. they keep in consultation just with Member Clark. <coughs> just, just last, the RADA board, the composition of the RADA board still stays the same? Or is it that... Um, the, the member, Ma Marshall Williams, still a member of that board? The, the member has resigned from the board. And from the, and, and from the parish advisory? And from the parish advisory board. Also. And just last piece, is Mr. Omar Thomas still consultant to the ministry? Well, the consultants that come with the ministers um, go with them. He's, oh, so he's, he's so he's he's a consultant to a minister without portfolio. Okay, so he is. Oh, yes, so he followed the minister um, over to. I, I, that's my understanding. Or he might be going to. He might be going to Jamaica House. Yeah. yeah. 
but he was also a consultant to the dairy board. Uh, I understand that there is some issue with with him and the dairy board in court for some works that were being done. I mean, right. so how does that work out, being a consultant to the minister and being a consultant to the dairy board, which is under the same ministry at the same time? All right, let me provide some light on that. Um, the contractual or consulting arrangements with dairy board predates okay. the, the ministerial uh, situation. That was under the previous um, CEO at the dairy board, historical stuff there. So when you say no, under the previous, so no, no, sorry, sorry, yeah, what? Give us a, a temporal. In in what time you're talking preceding board? But how long has he been with the dairy board? What was it? This the, the consultancy with the dairy board preceded his appointment as consultant. Yeah, but preceded by what yeah. period of time? A, a, about a year. So how long how long has he been with the dairy board? It was for a specific period, I'm not sure, maybe about a year or two. So he just started a year or two ago? As Where? consultant Where? to the minister? No, yes, to the just dairy board. Just with the, with the, with the, as consultant to the minister is, is about a year. And with the dairy board? Was there any Previous overlap? No, but was there any overlapping? No, That's what there, we're trying there's, to figure there's out. no overlap as far as okay. I'm aware. So he but, finished, but his, they, consult they, but, yeah. finished his consultancy with yeah. dairy board and then took up right. his consultancy with the minister. Right. right. So what is the claim? Read the dairy oh, board. My, my understanding of that is that um, the works that were executed with the dairy board is subject to some discussion and negotiation. Uh, um, recently, I was made to understand that he filed a claim against the dairy board for outstanding uh, payments. About 10 million. Uh, no. Mm. <laughs> no, as far as mm. I know, it could be about 2 million, 2.5 million. 10 million. No. Check it. Well, I could. Mm -hmm. but, but, but the situation is now, as we speak, that what happened is that the present chairman, when he inherited, had sought to Second, those matters, verifying contracts and what have you to ensure that they are paying according to um, agreed contract. Mm -hmm. And uh, instructions were given for payment, which was not followed by the previous CEO, and those matters became dead for a while. So while the dairy board was thinking that the payments were executed, the consultant was not paid, and so the consultant got perturbed about it. But I think that negotiations have been reopened recently, and I don't. But think isn't it in the in the Supreme Court? I think it has been it, it, withdrawn. It, 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 no, I think it has not, been not to my understanding. That's why I raise it. Well, yeah. we could we could check for yeah. the next um, round could to you, verify. Uh, but no. my understanding yeah. is that it is. And, it and, is and it is that the dairy board is is saying is saying that they are. Their, their defense of it is that they have not seen the work for the value that the claim is being made, yeah. hence why the refusal of payment. Check the, check the court documents. On a point of order, Mr. Chairman, the time is now 1 minute 24, 25 seconds past 2 o'clock. What are we doing? We have, we, we no, but you can't. No, no member Clark, that's, that's a bit frivolous. Um, Pierce, Pierce. I, I think it's the first time hearing of this, but it does cause for concern because my understanding in all the time that I've worked with consultants, it, it has been a very straightforward contract. They're paid within a certain band based on their qualifications, and there's an annual payment that they fall within. What you seem to be alluding to is that there's some... Um, some, yeah, some, this has more to do with projects and performance driven. So it becomes a different issue. So I think it may be useful for us without going any further in speculation if you could just give the committee a report on this issue, which seems to be a bit of an issue. Mr. Chairman, just to find out in respect to, just calm yourself. Just to find out, um, in terms of Ms. Marshall Williams, did the resignation, did you receive a resignation letter and what date it came into effect? Uh, it was immediate um, on the date it was received, but it's actually written to the minister, not to me. 
All right, because the minister appoint um, members. So I'd have to check to find and out what date it was. But it was immediate on the date that she said she sent it. Board still right. intact. The current board, board, board is, still is still intact. Intact, yes. Okay. So, Mr. Chairman, sorry, Mr. Shukir, with the leases that you give, right? You have a performance clause in it. For example, if you rent, if you lease 3,000 acres to do farming. Do you put a minimum period that they have to commence yeah, farming? Absolutely. A of all of it or a portion of it? I think we said, I think we say 60% of your business plan must be performed within year one and two. 60%, okay. All right. Members, uh, on your behalf, let me thank the, our, our guests today. Um, it's been a very interesting discussion. Members, I, 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 for next week, members, I, I'd make a suggestion, and, and again, these are issues, I, given all that's going on, I mean, every day when I'm looking at the papers, I think, I think it is incumbent on us as a committee to look into the, the Ministry of Health with the market me um, contracts, the extent to which we could ask the Ministry of Health to give a report. They seem to have released something, so it shouldn't be so difficult. I'll ask the clerk, with your guidance, if we can um, invite them um, next week um, and, and see whether or not it is, is feasible, and I'll get back to the committee with that. Yes, Mr. clerk. Well, what, let me ask you, when, when did you move around to the back? I was getting very claustrophobic. It was getting very claustrophobic. <laughs> I, I, I can well understand your concerns. <laughs> I can well understand. Yes, you are. Mr. Chairman, don't you, don't you think that inviting the Ministry of Health next week is a little bit... No, normally when we ask... No, I'm saying... Go ahead. Because I know that my very good friend here is not done yet where this matter is concerned. No, I, so I know. I, what I do No, want. I have no, no, I, I am not minded no. to, 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 to ask the Ministry of my okay. calf to return. I'm, I, when you say that, uh, you know, the permanent sector looked a little sad <laughs> when, you, when you alluded to the fact that he may be returning. Uh, Yes, but no, no, um, P.S., no, you're, we are thankful for, for, for the input. No, hence I'm going to just ask because it's not the ministry in general. I'm simply asking them to do a report on this specific item. We will take that item alone and move on. All right, so members, with that, um, the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members. All right. Um, yes. Mr. Thompson, let me, I just going to show you something. I may be the chairman of Mr. Thompson. Let me just tell you, these two are my two biggest, these are the farming community. And the So,